Welcome back to Lost in the Dark Podcast. We're here tonight. We are here tonight. Aaron and I are back in the crypt. Aaron, no. you were uh, you were supposed to be here last week, but you had fallen ill. Yes. You had oh. fallen ill. But uh, we, we ended up getting that great episode with Alex and Seth. Shout out to them. Shout out to Recorruptor. Absolutely, man. For Especially for sharing all the shit all week. And like, holy shit. Clint's yeah. been promoting the, the episode he's going to be on. He's going to be back here a week from yesterday on December 8th to do his gigantic album of the year list. <laughs> uh, I am unbelievably excited for that so yeah. because i've been i've been trying to dig through his list as much as i can because i'm we're, i mean obviously i'm working on our our own list our filthy 15 but for the year but uh but yeah i've been trying because so much of his list i haven't heard before and that's what i love that's yeah. something I, I really enjoy uh finding all this and and, and anybody who follows lead singer R- Greek corruptor clint on Facebook, he posted like a lot of the albums. I think a, a big ass list of the albums he's going to be talking about. So, really, and I've discovered some fucking gems off that list that I missed completely. They went. <laughs> I, I didn't know. Didn't even know they'd come out this year. Uh. Uh, like that new fucking Rotting Christ. <gasps> mm-hmm. Oh, gold! I love it so much. Yeah, there's a lot on that list that's solid. A lot of symphonic stuff, which is cool. And I—I like, I mean, that's my favorite kind of black metal, yeah. symphonic, <laughs> and pure Michigan. Hey, black metal. Um, I don't know why I came in here. It was convalescence, and yeah, who else? Shit! Before you got here, though, I was listening to that new Five Finger song. Breathing process. Yeah. I had to check it out. I had to <laughs> yeah, check it know. out because you know what, though, you know, as much shit as they get, and I might even have talked shit about them in the past or something, but I do have a big respect for them because everybody gives them so much shit. I fucking saw them. On their first ever national tour when they were third stage at the Family Values Tour with Corn, That was Corn's festival. <laughs> yeah, I remember and that one. Korn headlined it. And Five Finger was on this tiny little stage. And me, my cousin Preston, and our friend DJ, and my girlfriend at the time, Shauna, walked over to that stage, and they were the first band of the day that had any kind of pit going. We saw their name. We we made fun of the name. We were like, Five Finger. That is the worst name I have ever seen. What the fuck is that? And they were, like, were dressed out like, you know, Zoltan was in like a fuck the samurai outfit and everything. But we're like, there's a pit. Yeah. So we got in it. You know, we were like 16, 17, 16, mm-hmm. something like that, 18. And fucking, we just fucking we were ready for any pit that day. And uh, we, th- I thought they were hard as fuck. They were one of the hardest bands there that day. And that was their first ever national tour. First one ever. And their first album was not released on a label. Yeah. Most people don't know that. That's true. That yeah. first album was self-released. Mm-hmm. Like, they're the fucking grind. Like, they put in the fucking shit. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people think they just like, yeah, and they did catch on quicker than most. But... I would say about as quick as Slipknot. You know, they caught on with Iowa. It was their first one. Yeah. It took Five Finger Two, arguably, to really get on the radio. And the bleeding was huge. But besides that, no. and then well, see, here was the thing: is they released the first album on their own, and then they got a record deal, re-released the first album with two new songs, including Never Enough, which was also huge on the radio. Hmm. So, yeah, those first few albums. I like a lot. I saw them back on that tour when I was, you know, and it was before they were huge, as big as they are now, before all the crazy shit and the fucking uh, couple albums that I didn't really care for. You know what I mean? So I'll always, you know, have a little bit of, you know, some, because they went through it. And the fucking guy, you know, everybody gives them shit for the one guy that was in the Miley Cyrus band or whatever. You know what that says to me, though? For a while, I had a problem with it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to be not honest. Yeah, I, I, when I found that, I was, I was like, son of a bitch you know what i mean getting real hard to defend i was there. mad but then <laughs> i started thinking about it like much later on and i was like you know what that actually says to me is that no matter what what no matter what the fuck where the fuck you are what the fuck you're doing who the fuck you are in any category in any genre in any circumstance in anything there could be one person standing there that you don't know fucking loves heavy metal. You know, are the 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 fing 
fingernails, the icy cold fingernails that draw us, all us metalheads in, reach out as far as the Disney Channel. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they, we've infiltrated that. That's how I'm looking at this. We infiltrated it. And he's a good guitar player. Oh, yeah. Like, he's a really good guitar him. player. Yeah. So, so that's, I, I spun it around in my head. Mm. I look at it not as them, us being infiltrated by the Disney Channel, but the reverse. Yeah. There was a metalhead that tricked the Disney Channel into being able to play for Miley fucking Cyrus. Uh, and then went off and started his own band that goes, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I. I mean, I'll I'll give it to you. Like, Way of the Fist, War is the Answer, and American Capitalist, even. The Way of the Fist is a great fucking album. Yeah. I even love still, that album. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of really good songs Look. on it and stuff. And it's, I mean, you know, it, and it did a lot for, for heavy music at the time. It so, got screaming you know, on the radio yeah. besides just Slipknot. Yeah. Like, straight up. Yeah. Like, they, they had some riffs. Yes, they the did. First couple <laughs> albums, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then. And yeah, as a 17, 18, 19 year old kid going through fucking breakups and all kinds of shit, the bleeding was an anthem. Mm -hmm. Like, are you kidding me? Like, oh man. Like, every time I was, had that kind of anger going on, you know what I mean? It was the liar, mm -hmm. the bad actor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that it speaks to my youth angst yeah. in a big oh, bad way. That entire album. There's so yeah. many songs out yeah. there. Never like, enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking the devil's own. Yeah, that man. used to be my favorite. Um, it's it, like to me, it's when you know, like they, because I think that like the way or uh, American Capitalist was like one of the. I mean, well, no, never mind, because they, they did the double album too, which is halfway decent. Had the album with Rob Halford on it. And Jamie Josta. Josta. Yeah, yeah, no, I have. Been, uh, that's another reason why I have respect for them mm. because they are one of the first bands that. They're one of the first really big bands that did so. Like I always, I, like lately, it's been different. Lately, I've been finding a lot of shit. Mm. But before, I was, I was like, that's something I like a lot more about hip hop than metal. One of the few things is that they all collaborate. Yeah, they're all on each other's shit. Why can't I hear a Hatebreed album with Randy on? Even well, there's the Josta album. But why can't I hear a Devil Drive album with Josta on? You know what I mean? Like why? Aren't there? Why isn't there more of that? And Five Finger was one of the first big bands to really be a big collaborator in that sense. And uh, yeah. that's something that I, yeah, I think there should be more of in heavy metal. And I love anyone who does it. Mm. And I respect him for that reason, especially when you can get the king, Rob fucking Halford <laughs> and Jamie Josta. Yeah. yeah, both those tracks kick. Like, and there's more guests on that album that I'm, I just haven't heard it in forever. Yeah. But. There's a lot more. I think like the point, the point where it goes from, because I remember even when those two records were out, there was no like pushback or no. I mean, there was, but it wasn't as much as it is now. Mm -hmm. and I feel like on the last couple albums, they've definitely, and like to me, it, it when it, when you go from putting out records like that to releasing something that sounds very similar, if not identical, to the last album or to the last three albums. A lot of bands like it's it's hard for me to kind of get behind because it almost feels well, like repackaged. Well, two things too, stuff, like I guess. a a lot of bands have problems with that. That's not an uncommon thing. But at the same time, when you're trying to really have your like when when a five, I would argue that Five Finger is one of those bands where if you heard five seconds of any song, you could pick them up, pick them up because they have manufactured their own sound, yeah, very specific sound, uh, and. Also, yeah, but also, like, there were, like, after Wrong Side of Heaven, Right Side of Hell, I couldn't name you any of the albums after that, because I don't, th I, they just didn't promote them that hard, I don't know, I just didn't see them, I didn't even know, or I wasn't really aware that they were even coming out no. when they were coming out, you know what I mean? So, like, I, I don't know. They almost, it was like every year, it was something like a, a new release, but it was kind of like the same style, like the same kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. There wasn't really enough to kind of convince me that it was a step in the right or a step in like a new direction or like, you know, like the same, but kind of like, um, like redone. Evolving and, yeah, at all. Yeah. 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 It, it just kind of felt like the same thing. And that was, yeah. that was really the problem that I started having with them. Like no, a set aside you know, the popularity thing and everything else. Whatever, like, the shit they get. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like, 
you know. Personal. Like, you're just, this is just personal. Yeah. It's. That's it. Yeah. I mean, to to me, like, it's not the heaviest thing ever, but to somebody now, else listening to it for the first time and going back to that, like, that's, yeah. you know. If the radio is your gateway, then that's one of the heavier things. Yeah. You know what I mean? More often than not. And they they definitely got more recognition from covers, I feel like, the last few years than really anything. I mean, that Bad Company cover was great. Yeah. It's a great cover. I love that song. But, you know, you just you get kind of tired of hearing it it's over and over and over again. It's fucking overplayed. <laughs> yeah. Over. I did not like their cover. I don't like the song Blue on Black at all. Oh, really? So I did, Yeah, oh. not really. And I didn't like their cover of that. Well, because I, I heard the the original version way before. Oh, yeah. The of it. Yeah, I know the original. Yeah. yeah. And then don't even get me fucking started on Sounds of Silence. Yeah. Don't well, even get me <laughs> fucking started on Disturbed Sound of Silence. Don't. <laughs> We're talking about. We're a gonna change band here. topics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it just made me think of it. And now I'm angry. Well, so you know, you went to a show that you have yet to tell us about. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. It's been a minute. So uh, we're gonna. <laughs> you want to pull it up? Pull, I don't remember who all was there. Yeah. Well, I was not able to attend this show. I was off getting way too hammered at Jordan's <laughs> fucking wedding party uh, for all the people that were not able to attend the actual ceremony. Um, but we well, had a good time, and you, I heard you had a great time. Yeah, man. Uh, well, first of all, I kind of want to backtrack a little bit because we were talking about the the Recorruptor episode. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And I just the episode last week. Yeah, yeah I, I listened to it and I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Uh, Hell yeah! It was cool to like every time we do this, and I like this joint. But yeah, every every time we do this, and I've said this to you before, like you know. No matter who it is, I always feel like I pick something up or I learn something about somebody. Even like mm-hmm. if we've hung out for forever, if you know, like it's still it's still like that newness to it. Like I still try to take something from it. And that was that was full of like, oh yeah, like there was this or there was that or like tidbits. Yeah, like you guys were talking about stuff that I hadn't thought about in probably five or you know, five or ten years. Oh yeah, dude. at least. <laughs> so I, that was cool. They when they set me up. When, 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 I think it was Seth that The Strangers. Said, Dude. Let's talk about The Strangers. I don't know if yep, that's what you're going yep, into. But, that's exactly what he said. Yeah. We have to talk about that song. Yeah. I was like, there once was a man <laughs> in a little tiny house. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Dude, I was like, I can pull that out right mm. now. I was, yeah. There was certain. I was surprised by a lot. Yeah, I know. That episode, like, yeah. It's just, it's a trip. Yeah. It's a trip that anybody even has any interest that listens to this at all. Yeah. And then has interest <laughs> enough to actually be on it. Yeah. It's a trip. It still freaks me out. Mm. But like when it happens and it turns out great and we have this awesome conversation and then we have it forever. Yeah. Like we can go back to it and it's like something and then we can do more and it's it's just a it's such a weird medium. Yeah. Cause it's so off the cuff. Nothing's written. Nothing's planned. Like, yeah, I sat down. Like with with new people, I'll sit down with a couple questions in mind just to get conversation flowing. But I'm not. I'm only gonna ask questions that I'm interested in. But I'm not. I'm more interested in where the answers to those questions lead than the actual answer to the question. You know what I mean? I get that. So. You know, it's not, I'm not trying to interview anybody. I just want to talk to them. And like, questions are a great way to get conversations started. So, yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of times, something that you ask could usually go into something else. Exactly. You know, it kind of like exactly. spirals into. So, so that was cool. And like, you know, it's, it's, it's weird that sometimes you like, all right. Uh, you know, like you've, you've known these people for so long or, you know, you like, you've been around the scene with them and stuff and like, you know, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like, you, you you get to talking and stuff, and it's like, oh, yeah, remember this, remember that, remember, like, oh, there was this thing that happened in this show, and then, you know, and it was just, so it was cool to kind because of, I had a few things, like, that I heard when uh, when I was listening back to it that I was like, oh, yeah, like, that did happen, or that was a thing, <laughs> you know, so, so that was cool. I couldn't believe that the first, I thought about it after the episode but seth had said that the first time he ever met you was at the cd release show the yeah. medica and i was like that's i think that's the first day i met him. <laughs> like so seth and i met you yeah that, that that's insane and then to all these years later yep. like to come back and end up here is fucking wild 
It's fucking wild, dude. Small world. <laughs> it is crazy. So, but I just, no, no, no. There was, uh, and then on top of that, though, there was something else. I don't remember right now. Fuck it. Uh, well, what were you gonna say? R- regardless, I just you know just wanted to extend the the thanks and yeah. the appreciation for that. You know, huge. Because you know when you get people that are interested, much less like friends and you know people that have been around the scene and stuff to kind of be interested in you know being on and having a conversation with us and stuff like it's just cool to me so you know i appreciate both you guys and you know for coming around and being a part of it with us and getting a cool episode in for people to listen to and that's i uh, i was i was really trying to be here that day but it just didn't really work out this kind of year this type of or time of year it's pretty tough (laughs) for me and then uh, uh, also so one of the comments there, I, I don't know where it was, but someone did make a comment somewhere that really tickled me and said, I love hearing about origin stories of the bands. Yeah. And I was like, that is kind of exactly what I'm going for, at least for the first time when I have someone like that on, because that's what I love too. Like one of my favorite things is hearing origin stories and how they got started and weird little tidbits and stuff like that. And like, if if this medium had existed, if podcasts had existed, let's say podcasts started in the 19, in 1990. What if? Let's live in a what if world for a minute where podcasts started in 1990. Imagine hearing a podcast with members of Cannibal Corpse or Thy Art is Murder or um, give me give me something, Lamb of God, Children of Bodom. In between their first two albums. And their first album was totally self-released. And they still don't have record deals. Imagine a world that looks like that. And you get to hear them on a podcast at that point in time. Just being themselves. You know, just totally being free. Is that not something you would fucking cherish? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. that's kind of like the way I look at these ones right now with with you or any other member of Bogwaith or Recorruptor or anybody else whoever the fuck wants to come on. Like that's exactly how I look at it. So yeah. Oh it's cool. It's it's a certain place in time, you know. It's a it's a stamp where you can kind of go back and, and especially now like because I, I remember doing the the episode about Omen. Mm-hmm. Talking about that, and even that was like listening back to that. It's like wow, like yeah, you know, like I can remember exactly what I was thinking, like how I was feeling and stuff at the time. Yes, and so it was you know and that was the first album. So yeah. I even got you for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the as a fan, oh yeah, you know what I mean. At the end of the day, I'm just a fan, mm-hmm. and as a fan, I'm just trying to create what I guess I'm just trying to create what I would have liked to have heard. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the, be- the best way I can. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really trying to do anything. I'm just trying to, you know? <laughs> but, like, I do think about that kind of a thing, like, from those angles and stuff like that, of, like, this, you know, if I could have heard an interview with the Black Dahlia Murder in between their first two albums, I feel like that would have been an amazing, like, not ju- not an interview, but a two-hour long format conversation a podcast. You know what I mean? Like they didn't exist even when Dolly like they were starting to exist. No one had was doing a heavy metal podcast yeah. when Dolly was first come. Absolutely not. So though that's when the first podcasts ever were being created. Um by like Mark Marin, I think, is credited with having one of the first and obviously Kevin Smith, uh, and some of the some yes, just some of the original first ever podcasters that were like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. We can just sit down with microphones and talk for hours and then just post it? What's this internet cool. thing yeah. exactly? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Katie what Kirk. are we talking yeah. about? <laughs> um, But yeah, yeah, insane. So yeah, let's, your show. I I need to hear everything. I, oh, wash me with detail. <laughs> I had the, the, the pleasure and the chance to catch uh, Fit for an Autopsy at Sanctuary. It's in Detroit. It was on the twenty second of November, so it was a week ago. I think of as of last Friday. A week ago Friday, yeah. yeah. It's with uh it was fit for an autopsy. It was their headline. It was the Sea of Tragic Beasts album, album release tour. Album release tour. It's with Lorna Shore, uh Last Ten Seconds of Life and Discarnate and Forces was opening. Fuck. So yeah, it was it was pretty stacked. 
And it was sold Stacked out. Stacked as fuck. Yeah. Sold out sanctuary show. I felt immediately as soon as I walked in, I felt like I was like a sardine because you kind of had to like shift a little bit and kind of like. It was already know. that packed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we we got there, <clears throat> we didn't actually end up getting a chance to see Forces. They were the Aww. yeah, they were the local headliner, which is cool. Uh, well, they're, they're great. Yeah, yeah, I've heard good amount, of, you know, good bit of their stuff. They put out some new stuff recently. It's pretty cool. So I thought they were a good fit, at least like sound wise. Um, and then yeah, we got there as soon as we did, and uh, Discarnate started. They were one of the bands I was looking forward to. So fucking good. Three piece band. Never seen them live though. Yeah, it's dude, it's like. They played like I don't. I'm trying to think. Like it's it's like it's like Misery Index meets like Lamb of God esque. I would say that's stuff. a pretty good description. You know, yeah. That was that's pretty good. Yeah. Um. How do they do in terms of energy live? Oftentimes it's hard for a three piece, especially when when the bassist and 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 guitarist are also both vocalists, mm. right? Yeah. I think it's hard sometimes for them to appear to have a lot of energy and move around a lot on stage because they have so much to do already just to play the song. Hmm. How did they do? Yeah, it was, yeah, I mean. Kind of easier given that um, I feel like uh, venue with a small stage, you can do a lot yeah. and not have to move around a lot. I feel like it was, I mean, it was pretty solid as far as, you know, like the energy and stuff. I mean, they, they didn't really have to do much because their songs kind of speak for themselves, really. Mm-hmm. Like, if you've ever heard of them, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Like, it's that kind of, like, you know, power, like, mosh-heavy kind of stuff. Like, yeah. you know, really heavy, like, down-tempo down, down tempo sort of stuff sometimes. And other times, it's really, like, groove-heavy stuff. Um, played Iron Strength and Zyron and the Promethean, which nice. are, like, two of the sickest songs ever. Nice. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was cool. And I feel like, I feel like it probably would have been a little bit more different if it were either their headliner or if they were like co-headlining uh, as far as like the energy of it and stuff. Cause they only played, I think four or five or five or six songs as far as I know. Uh, but it was all sick. Like it was cool to see him finally. Um, cause every time I had a chance to, I just kind of missed them or just never had a chance to actually like catch it and stuff and go out. So, so it was cool to see him. Um, didn't end up getting to see the last 10 seconds either. Uh, just kind of hanging out, talking to people. I think uh, Clint, Alex, and I ended up going and getting food somewhere across the street. Oh, okay. Deal. okay. So we were hanging out and stuff. Ended up catching the last the last song that they had. They're a bit more like down tempo sort of stuff, like a little more like like guttural. Like I'll have to show you some other older stuff as well because it's it's really sick. Mm-hmm. Um, I like they just put out a new album last year or either last year or early this year, like super early this year. Um, I was really into uh, the violent, the violent sound that came out. That was the album before last. Um, of the last ten seconds, the na- that's the yeah, name of the band. Yeah, last ten seconds I of don't life. Know them. Yeah. Oh, of life. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will have to show you some other stuff because long like, name. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a lot of people just kind of abbreviate, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, because they're they're kind of interesting because the lineup that they have now and the vocal style and like just everything is completely different from how it was when they started the band mm-hmm. they were more kind of like downbeat stuff like hardcore stuff kind of like like traders i guess mm-hmm. that kind of style um a lot of like guttural stuff a lot of like angry like short songs okay like you know just just kind of like hardcore yeah like cr- yeah, like crowd kill kind of stuff. Esk, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like really, really heavy, like violent, angry stuff. <laughs> I mean, they still are. Just it's a little bit changed now. It's a little bit different. Um, so yeah, that was that was cool to kind of see them, um, or at least like catch you know last song or two yeah. of them. Yeah. <clears throat> and then Lauren Ashore, they were they were the co-headliners. Now and didn't I? Holy shit! I. <sighs> Did we see them? Did we see them together? Yeah. Did they? Sorry. So they weren't at Metal Fest nineteen. They were at Metal Fest eighteen. Right. Okay. They were. They were before. And that was with the new, the current lineup. Yeah. That was that because I I remember you. I think I remember you saying that was the first time you saw them with that lineup with mm-hmm. that new singer. Yeah. 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 So, I guess for those that don't know, um, CJ from Lorna Shore now was with uh, a band called Signs of the Storm. Mm-hmm. And then um, that vocalist change happened, and now <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so now they're they're they got a new album coming out next year which is going to be pretty sick hopefully um because i've i've seen them a few times uh with Mm -hmm. with earlier vocalists Mm -hmm. i ended up seeing them with um with i can't remember his name right now um he sings for chelsea grin now tom tom barber oh yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. so i'm with uh they were at the um and actually, it wasn't because uh, Alex and I were standing there and watching them and stuff, and we were trying to figure out when the last time we saw him was. And he started talking about the show at Papa Pete's that we saw that was out in like Kalamazoo, I think. Okay. We played there a few times, and we ended up because we I saw him. That was I think that was the first or second time that I saw him, but it was the original lineup, and it was when uh, Coffin. Uh, Talk. No. No. Um. It's the name of their album. Oh. Let me see. Oh! 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 Shit. Yeah, so I don't one of remember. the best ones of. I don't remember at all. Um, it escapes my mind. Flesh Coffin. That's right. 2017. Flesh Coffin. Yeah. Such a good name. One of the sickest albums of 2017 to me. Like it was on a lot of people's lists and stuff. So I saw him when it was it was them, Body Snatcher, who had another band that's kind of like like down tempo sort of stuff. I've been mm-hmm. listening to a lot of that recently. Um, so yeah, I saw him the original lineup, and then we saw him at Metal Fest, and then mm-hmm. this time and. This time, I don't know if it was because it was inside and it was a smaller venue and it was just kind of packed, but like way better, way better this time than I nice. expected. Yeah. Nice. Like well, they, this is also like uh, probably two years later, so yeah. they've had some time to that was, play together a little bit more and stuff. That's yeah. kind of the thing. Like you could you could definitely tell that there had been some, you know, like some definite growth yeah. between those two times. And, you know, what? <clears throat> I remember saying I was kind of, I mean, admittedly, I was kind of underwhelmed when I saw him at Metal Fest mm-hmm. just because of seeing him prior and everything and not really sure how the vocalist lineup is going to be or mm-hmm. the vocalist change is going to be. Because um, a lot of times that's that's kind of up in the air, especially depending on what you know what band it is. Like sometimes it's kind of weird to see you know new vocalists doing old songs in the old style, I guess. Yeah. And I remember yeah. thinking at Metal Fest, like, man, like I, I bet – you know, the newer stuff with the new vocalist is going to be really sick. And they actually, mm-hmm. ended, I think they ended up playing three songs, three new songs off it. Because prior to this, they put out a couple different singles mm-hmm. before that. And yeah, live, it's like one of the one of the sickest pits I've seen, like all show for that. Oh, yeah. That was really awesome. A lot of energy, a lot of like, you know, just just big mosh parts, you know. That kind of thing. So it was cool. Like the energy was awesome. And if you've ever been to like a sold out show at Sanctuary, I don't know how many there have been, but it's, I mean, like you get, you get kind of pushed into some things at certain points. <laughs> so total fucking chaos. That's what happened at St. Andrews at Cannibal. Yeah. <laughs> Got pushed into all kinds of shit. All of a sudden, there's one in front of you, one behind you, and yep. you got to kind of decide which one you're going to fall into. Decide which one, or are we trying to connect them? Yeah. <laughs> These are the options. And a lot of times, it's not up to you. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that time, it kind of was, though. Like, you and I looked at each other a few times like, should we do this? Mm-hmm. And then we kind of started doing it. Yeah. It was, that was such a great pit. Yeah, the best I've been in a <laughs> long, long time. But yeah, so the Lorna Shore, they were great. Yes, oh, fantastic. Definitely check out if you haven't. They got a couple of new. Uh, I was just listening to them the other day. Couple of new Trezex. Uh, Darkest Spawn. Um, this is Hell. I think is their two songs, and then Death Portrait. So check those out. Be on the lookout for their newest album. Um. Uh, yeah. Um. To round out the night, the evening was fit for an autopsy. Who? Uh, I think Black it was either yeah, <laughs> dude. Like set list was it was like everything that I wanted to hear Fuck and yeah. more from them. Fuck like yeah. they played. They opened with "See a Tragic Beast." They played "Do You See Him?" They played. Uh I have Mammoth. To even, yeah, Black Mammoth. I think they ended with Black Mammoth. I mean, that's their biggest song. Um, Great video. They played Mirrors. Song. Mirrors, that's which, probably so far my favorite track on the album. Yeah. So far. So far. I'm not that deep into it. Um, but so far. There's that. They played Shepherd, 
Like, they played a lot of stuff off the new album. Um, they played Warfare, which I know I've sent you the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. Like, that that song has become kind of a go-to on that oh, album. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll, be sure to, uh, I'll be sure to pay special attention to that one. It is. To it. Yeah, man. Like, it is, it is just some, like, ignorant shit. Like, it's some fight riffs. I'll some, be... <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll be ready. I mean, if you want to do a review, we could do that this week. Yeah. If you are down. Probably down, Because I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do it alone. Put it that way. Yeah. For them, I wouldn't want to do it alone. I need you to do it. Well, I've been, I've been thinking a lot about, like, like, between the last, because I, I first really started getting into them on uh, Hellbound mm-hmm. when that was out, and that was probably, like, <laughs> three albums ago mm-hmm. and they don't even have the same vocalist that was on it because mm-hmm. uh, after that one was absolute hope absolute hell right and that was kind of when i first started paying attention to them like a little bit more after that and that was kind of like the vocalist switch thing that i was talking about like because I, I i had seen them a couple of times since uh when they changed the the lineup and stuff um i saw them with i think it was with thy art that show i was talking about it mm-hmm. was at the loft up here um and yeah, man. Like ever since then, you can kind of tell that they've been um, kind of leading up to this album stylistically. There's yeah. a lot of stuff on it that more so, more so on the Great Collapse that mm-hmm. they do like twice more on on the new album that I think is really cool. They do a lot of a lot of the clean singing stuff and all of that, like the 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 clean stuff in Mirrors that he goes into, like, the first part of it, and then it goes into, like, the harsher stuff, like, the heavier section. Mm-hmm. It was all done live. Like, and it nice. was just, I mean, to hear that kind of power and that kind of emotion for a song like that. That's pretty and cool, to actually. have it To have it be, like, spot on is, like, it just, do I had chills the whole time. Like, that was probably one of my favorite moments of the set um, was oh, hearing yeah. that song live. Just because, like, it's, it's about... You know, I mean, it's it's pretty heavy as far as like subject matter and stuff. You know, um, about like addiction and different things that kind of like take over you and stuff. And so it's you know you definitely feel it, and just some you know stuff that kind of like it's either it's either gonna kill you or it's you know or you're gonna kill it. I guess mm-hmm. so. It's kind of that whole thing. Um, but yeah, just I don't know. It was just sick to see him. I've been listening to that album pretty much since it came out. I mean, this is the second time we've seen him. You've seen him this year. Yeah. Second or oh yeah, because third. Yeah, the first time was at uh, Harpo's at Hatebreed. Yeah, Harpo. Yeah. So and we talked to the lead singer and we got some shit signed by him that night. Oh yeah, yeah. So yep. you got yeah. So you got Hellbound signed by him. That and what's hilarious <laughs> is <laughs> for the longest time. I've been trying, like, I literally thought about this while I was listening to the new album earlier today, and I just put it all together in my head, because I didn't know which CD to get, I didn't know him that well, so I didn't know which CD to get, and I was just like, all right, I'll I'll take that one, can you sign it? And he's like, you want me to sign this one? I'm like, yeah, and he did, and I just now realized why he questioned it because you just told me he's not on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> like really. literally as you said that i was like oh my god is that the cd i had him sign yep. <laughs> and it was <laughs> well that was because <laughs> the, the one that the one that came after that was absolute hope and that was the first album he was on <laughs> but in in your defense though i i think i remember trying to look for different albums and stuff and they didn't have it they didn't have very many yeah when we were there yeah that's true that is true it was one of the it was like 50 50 shot yeah and i think i already had the one the other one because it was the new one and i had already had the one with mammoth on it yeah and i think the other option was that one i was like well i have that one yeah it's my only option yeah uh well i guess i I, well (laughs) i mean i don't know things happen you know like (laughs) (laughs) I had the lead singer of a band sign an album. He's not on. I'm sure he gets that all the hey, time. Hey, maybe though. that's like, rare. Maybe it'll be a rare thing. One could day. be, yeah. <laughs> that's so fucked up. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm they... sorry. See, is his name CJ? Uh, What's his name? Joe. Joe. I'm yeah, sorry, Joe. So bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like you a lot. You're great. Awesome live. How that he killed that show at Harpo's. They were like yeah. the opening band. Yeah. And there was already a decent amount of people there, honestly. 
not that many, but a decent amount. Mm. More, I've put it this way: I've seen bigger bands open for smaller crowds at that show, yeah. at that venue. Sorry, at that venue. Um, decent crowd for them, and they got people fucking moving yeah. off the rip. And they didn't even really have all the stage lights on yet. Like it was fucking. They were kind of playing in the dark a little bit, and it. But it was brutal. Yeah, it was. Oh, well, that was a got, great set. I still got videos from that show. Oh yeah, me too. They're on the Instagram. They played. Uh, I'm just looking at the set list right now. I forgot they played when the bulbs burn out. I don't know if you've heard that song. I don't know that one. Dude. Uh, at least by name. Yeah. It's off, it's off the Great Collapse. It's one of the slower, more ambient I've ones. definitely heard it. Yeah. I've heard that album top to bottom. Um, but I don't know many of the songs by name. Like, that was that was something else entirely. Because I, I hadn't expected to hear any, like, and that was kind of more, like, deep cut off of that album. Because I didn't really play that one too much. And it was just cool. Like, it was, it was just, I mean, way heavier live than it is on the album. And it wasn't until hearing it at the show that i kind of figured out like oh like that's that's what they were going for like that's kind of because it's it's one of the more standout tracks to me on that one mostly because of just like the drum parts in it and it's more like there's a lot of build-ups and stuff to it mm -hmm. I, you know which i think is cool um i played iron moon murder in the first flatlining heads will hang black mammoth they ended with hydra mm, i do know that one yeah um so yeah, just all around. Like I think, I think they're one of the best, if not like one of the top bands going right now. To put it this way, this is the time to see them because yeah. they're still playing the small venues, and they're gonna get huge, for sure. That's like, yeah, yeah. So I mean, we you know saw them with Hatebreed and Obituary and Terror and opening. Yeah, for all of them, Chrome Mags. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think because. A lot of a lot of hate breed tapped them to be on the 25th anniversary tour. Yeah. Put it that way. You know what I'm saying? That's that's when you know you're doing something. Yeah. In the right direction. You're making noise. Yeah. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Making fucking noise and uh, yeah, awesome to hear that they can really deliver on a headlining. Yeah. So and we even saw them head. Yeah. That was last year. That yeah. you opened for them yep. at Max, yeah, that was last year. And even even that, like, cause that was <laughs> that was a shorter set. They were like half the band, cause I think that the drummer was uh, filling at the time. Okay. So they played like f I think five or six songs, and that was it. This was like a thirteen song set Hell the yeah. last time. So crazy that we saw them at Max, though. Yeah. Oh, like, dude. Think about that now. <laughs> like they're yeah. being talked about everywhere. Yeah. They will. Perfect segue. Perfect segue. I can guarantee you they will be on 2020 Mayhem Fest. I would be surprised if they weren't. Now, let's real quick. Hold on. I'm going to pause real quick. So just recently, actually, like just the other day, you pointed out a post to me before the story broke everywhere today. You pointed out a post to me from like Mayhem Fest's page that said, don't call it a comeback. And it was a picture of Rocky. Mm. And now that story a couple of days later now has been picked up everywhere. It was, it was like two days ago when I was over here and we saw for my it. birthday. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm honestly shocked that it didn't make more of an impact the day after, or even like a couple hours after just because of like what it was and yeah. what it was leading to. Yeah. It's but two days on. later that this story really has been picked up. And that Mayhem Fest is coming back in 2020. And this is something we've been talking about and wanting and hoping for. And my fingers are crossed. Like, my my only concern at this point is that what if it's only, like, a one-off show? Or it ends up being, like a like, a UK thing. Yeah. That'd be... Which is very possible because I had be done a that before. Knife in the gut <laughs> as well. <laughs> or or it's like a West Coast thing because they did that with Warp Tour, like the year after. I it mean, ended. they've done that with Ozfest where it was just like Mexico and yeah. Texas. Yeah. Um. But regardless, Mayhem Fest is, and my my guess is, I, I, I honestly, look, 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 with the climate going on, with everything. All the bands right now, 
there is no reason not to come back with the touring festival. No reason. You get Slipknot to headline, play their album top to bottom like they've been wanting to. You get Hatebreed because they're going to be on a gigantic world tour next year with the fucking new album. I'm coming out with a new album. Fucking you get Fit for an Autopsy, Thy Art is Murder, Cannibal Corpse, uh, Carnifex. Fucking all the hitters right now. Who else we got? Amana Marth. Behemoth on the main stage. Lamb of God provided the new album is out by then. Yeah. Uh, Devil Driver with their double album coming out next year. They should be there. Fucking A. If Anthrax finally comes out with their new album, throw them on there. Like You got hitters. <laughs> hitters. <laughs> hitters. All potentially coming out with new albums next year or just released an album this year. And some of those bands, like the biggest one in the world right now, Slipknot, has not yet been on their United States We Are Not Your Kind tour yet. They were on the Not Fest. They made very clear this is not the album tour. Yeah. The album tour is next year. They made that very clear. So that's still coming. Why not roll that into Mayhem Fest? The return of Mayhem Fest five years after it ended. Has it really been five years? Yeah, the last year of Mayhem Fest was 2015. Wow. I didn't realize It'll that. It'll be five years in 2020 since Mayhem Fest. I thought, yeah. I thought there was at least like one in 2015. I don't even remember it when it It happened ended. in 2015. 2015 okay. was the last year. Yeah. I think maybe I'm getting uh, that one and but I didn't Warped go. Tour mixed up. Yeah. Because yeah. Warped Tour ended last year. But, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. No, Mayhem Fest definitely did uh, not yeah. happen last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Regardless, though, yeah, that's, I mean, the fact that, for one, like I said, that that isn't blowing up right now. It is. I mean, it's on every, yeah. every, everyone's reporting yeah. right now. I guess before everyone. now, yeah. And it was just that, but all the, I read all the stories, they're all based on what you showed me mm. two days ago. Yeah. So I knew it. <laughs> I was like, no, yeah. nobody's talking about it. And then all of a sudden, everybody's mm. talking about it. Yeah. So that's like to me, it, it would have made more sense for that to just be everywhere, like a couple hours afterward. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think. Fuck it. It I, is now. I think maybe and we were going to talk about it regardless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think maybe they're kind of seeing, <clears throat> you know, because with with the year that that we've had with releases I mean, and with yeah, shows consider, and stuff, consider like, consider all the bands I just listed, all the albums that have just come out, and the fact that there is no festival, and how successful the Slipknot Fest Roadshow and the Slayer Tour was. When you take all that into consideration, and if you were to put those two 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 tours together, it would have pretty much been a, not, a mayhem fest. Yeah. The market's still there oh, and yeah. bigger than ever. Yeah. That's all I can say. It is. It is weird to me that. You know, I don't know. Like, I guess uh, I guess uh, I could kind of see like in terms of like the issues that they were having. The last year they had issues. it. I don't know. Uh, I guess I don't know anything. But. I guess like from from my understanding of it, the the um, the attendance wasn't that great. They were having all kinds of issues and stuff. The last year that they had it. Well, what I read in one of the articles was that like the like, one of the. Like there was one main guy that founded it, and there was another guy that came on board, but was like the other main guy, you know. Mm. And then that guy, after everything was over, said, "Metal is old and fat." Yeah, that's right. Or something I like that. that. Yeah. And like nobody listens to it anymore, and all this. Well, look. <laughs> all right, I've been to twenty fucking two shows this year alone, mm -hmm. and. I got other news for you, my friend. Other news because there is a young, there's a new generation getting into all this shit right now, and I'm seeing them at all the fucking shows, and it's incredible. Yeah. It's in fucking incredible. Oh, yeah. This year has been one of the greatest years I've ever, this year and last year have been two of the best show years ever of my life, personally. Like, I've seen uh, almost every band I've ever wanted to see. In the last two years alone. You know what I mean? I've been going to concerts for fucking next year. Wait. Next year will be 10 years. 15 years. Next year, I will have been going to concerts for 15 years. Wow. Almost 50% of my life at that point. 
So it's yeah. I've been going to concerts for a long fucking time. Yeah. I was once the new generation of kids going to these shows. Mm. I was we were all once there. We were all those kids at one point. That was some of the best shows we ever saw. Oh, yeah, when man. we look back on them. Yeah. And God. And uh <laughs> And now I see the next ones, and I'm, you know, and but we're we're not we're not the fucking old men in the back of the show yet. You know what I'm saying? We're still <laughs> in the pit, yeah. motherfuckers. So we're not in pit retirement yet. That's for goddamn sure. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It, that's that anybody who thinks that anybody who says a statement like that is clearly just ignorant of the situation and just mad about the ticket sales for their own show yeah. or something. Well, like, they said there's no headliners. Uh, Are you serious? Tell that to Iron Maiden. Yeah. <laughs> Tell that to Guns N' Roses. Yeah. There's no headliners. Tell that to Slipknot. There's no headliners. Tell that to Hayfried on when they sold out every goddamn show on their 25th anniversary tour, both legs. There's well, no headline. Tell that to Slayer, who who's been touring for three years on their farewell tour. Yeah. It just ended what yesterday, two days ago. I was in Los to, Angeles. About to say it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like. Tell that to Slayer. Yeah. Motherfucker. And like we've, you know, the fact that, like Slayer, had finally reached the end of the the tour cycle for the last tour ever. Allegedly, hundred percent, hundred. I wow, yeah. Not to say that they will never do like a one-off again or something like that. They, I genuinely believe they will never tour again. Yeah, G- I genuinely believe that. Or have a new record or anything like that. Nope. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't put it past them to do a single, maybe a song for a crazy movie yeah. someday. You know, something. You know, p- p- I wouldn't put it past them to. Never be Slayer together again. You know what I mean? In some fashion, for some reason, for something special. You know, maybe one final Big Four show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something like that. You know, I would not put it past him for some. But I don't think they will ever play in the state of Michigan as Slayer again. Put it that way. Or yeah. many anywhere really else. Like, mm. you know, <laughs> there's never going to be a tour I don't think there's ever gonna be no full length album. Nothing. Well, and the fact that because I got a documentary, that'd be sweet. Yeah, well, I think there's one in the works right now. Really? Yeah, I, was, I I could be wrong about that. I feel like I saw something, or no, it was they put out a movie. They released a movie that the was in theaters. Yeah, yeah, that's for the final tour. It's like a tour movie. And it's just a live. Yeah, it's a live thing. Even so, but, but I think there's yeah. something. I think there's another. I think it's more than just a live thing. I don't know. I kind of want to see. It's out. You can buy it on DVD. I need to buy it. I need to find out what the fuck it is. But the fact that... I think Danny Trejo's in it. Yeah, it seems like I saw that. One of the trailers. (laughs) Yeah. I love my chitta. I guess he's a big metalhead. Yeah, and he's a fucking big fan of and friend of James and Bob. Yeah. His friend of James (laughs) Mute. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact that... Because, I mean, there was a Mayhem Fest where both Slipknot and Slayer played. And we're headliners. Oh yeah. So I was there. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I wouldn't. You're gonna miss that. No. Somebody gonna miss that. Impossible. Like, yeah. Impossible. That was one of the greatest shows of my life. Yeah. Like. Yeah. That was total I, fucking chaos. And I remember because that was the first show after Paul died. I no. remember being at that one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Or not not the first show necessarily, what but the, the first, first like time they were in Michigan. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I remember seeing that, and yeah, they had a whole wow. they had a whole. Uh, backdrop with the number two on it i remember that his number and stuff i actually do remember that yeah but i wasn't i wasn't into him at the time so i wasn't fully aware of mm. all of that the you know gravity what I mean? of no what was I, happening. Did, I didn't know yeah. i didn't know <laughs> wow yeah man that was probably was one of the show, more memorable crazy. shows that i've seen of them just because like you know i saw it and you know i was i was that's like one of like one of my greatest life achievements without even being an achievement i guess i don't even know what to call it but like see seeing them as the full lineup and then kind of seeing them over the years and stuff i know i know um, what you mean i know what you mean because i feel that same way about certain bands yeah same yeah same thing yeah so, definitely but as far as as far as mayhem fest 2020 goes i have i'm i'm holding my breath but i also have very high hopes for it mm. and i also hope that they really understand that like 
you get one. Like <laughs> you had everybody this, gets one. There's a very easy way to do this very this wrong. A, but there's like, a, there's also a real easy way to do this very right. There's that's true, yeah. Dolly is coming out with a new album. Maybe. Uh, they should be on it. Yeah. You know, I mean it, this is low hanging just all the <laughs> bands that came out with new albums in the in 2019 and are coming out in are in and would be promoting album new albums by that time in 2020. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You got everybody. You got Whitechapel, mm. Amon Amarth, Children of hmm. Hmm. Never mind. Well. <laughs> um, um, and everybody else that I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to mention them again, but like <laughs> So everyone, mm. everyone, suicide silence is coming out with a new one next year, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, dude. Like everyone, all of the heaviest hitters that have ever been on that fucking festival, besides like Sli or, or, or Slayer. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, oh, ma okay. Going. Let's let's talk about main stage. It would be it have to be Slipknot, and then you gotta. I, I'm, it's got to be Lamb of God. Direct support to Slipknot has got to be Lamb of God. I don't. There's no one else. There's no one else that makes sense. Would there's you, no one else that makes real sense. How? How? Unless would you, unless Anthrax has the album out by that time, then Anthrax would make sense. Yeah. But it still wouldn't make sense for Lamb of God not to be there. For them not to be there at all would make no sense. Do you at this point in time? Especially with the new album coming out next year, do you see Black Dahlia being a headliner? I no. Put it this way, Dahlia is one of the best headliners that's out there, but I never want to see them on the main stage at DTE because it just. I'd never want to be that far away from them because I'm a I'm a lawn guy. <laughs> I, I I like the party on the lawn. That's yeah. where I like to be for those shows. Yeah. But I never. But there are certain bands that it bums me out when I'm that far away from them. <laughs> Lamb of God and Dahlia would be a big one. Hatebreed would be another one. Mm -hmm. Even though I know Hatebreed wants to be on that main stage so bad, and they deserve it. Oh, so hell yeah. So does Dahlia. Easily. I'm not taking anything. Like they all deserve it. Yeah. They all like, and I get it that it's a thing when you're, you know, in a band. That's where you want to be is on the main stage, mm -hmm. and they all fucking. I would even. I would personally argue any of those bands could headline that entire festival. Yeah. I 100% think Dahlia and Hatebreed and Lamb of God could all straight up headline that festival if Slipknot weren't there hmm. or if Disturbed weren't there or if Slayer weren't there or if Manson weren't there. I could I could see Gojira headlining. But, you know, I like all those other bands. Those years, so um, <laughs> just, I get, I'm just I get, saying I think yeah. they're at that level. I genuinely believe that they are at that level Yeah. as a, as a fan mm. of all of them. That's Dude, that's one of the hardest things as far as, like, separating, you know, your, your selfish, like, fan right, side exactly. of things. That's what, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, yeah. if, if I... As a fan for designing the festival, just what I wanted to see, Lamb of God would be headlining a second stage in the parking lot. 100%. <laughs> because Dude. that's what I want to see. Dude, yeah. And it would be chaos. <gasps> it would be like four circle pits going out at the same time. And then it would all converge into a tornado of misery. Yeah. Like, <laughs> The wall of death would be <laughs> during Bla if they ended with Black Label in the Kick parking old school. lot. Oh my god! <gasps> it'd be over forever. Oh. It would be total fucking chaos. Yeah. Like oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it'd be the greatest thing ever. But yeah, no, dude. Like there's there's so well, you know these last few couple years in has been have been so amazing for metal and next year has it does it there are no signs of it slowing down mm. cuz the shit that we already know of that's coming out next year not even talking about the shit we don't know about yet but the shit we already know of coming out next year is next year's going to be oh people are gearing up for 2020 let's put it that way <clears throat> well man like as far as i mean i'm i'm pretty excited as uh at least with the the pen, uh, Jesus, 
<laughs> oh, like verbal diarrhea. Uh, as far as like the potential for for Mayhem Fest next year, like I see it, I see it as like, you know, let's let's give if logically if they were thinking logically about it, which you know here not it's not here nor there. I guess it's kind of up to interpretation. But like if if you were smart about booking for it, you would put like the highest tier bands on the main stage that everybody wants to see. Of course, of course. And then yeah. you put like, you know, let's let's say like Slipknot, well, Lamb of God, Amon <coughs> Marth, Behemoth. But on yeah. That's it. That's main stage. Give them main stage and then side stage, you know, like I personally I'd like to see, you know, like traders like Shadow of Intent, you know, with breathing the destruction, process. breathing process, you know, all these other bands. Convalescence. That are, yeah, man. That are really they like, all deserve spots. Yeah. That are really actually like have put out really sick albums this and, year and, and that are actually doing something. And do it you know? and do it like they used to in the beginning, because in the beginning, uh Mayhem Fest would have rotating local spots. Yeah. Remember? Oh yeah. That's how No Life first started playing there. Yep. So have that. fucking a bog wraith and a recorrector <laughs> there, motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, come on. Oh dude. Come on. Like, like <laughs> another level. Yeah. This is this is a new level of destruction that we're talking about right here. I just like there there's so much you could do and even, you know, the potential of I mean, um just devastation on the nation already came out with uh Rod and Christ and uh there was another band that was out there that hadn't been that hadn't played a show in the States in like twenty years. So yeah, br- oh, <gasps> Bork, you, I, I think dude, I, I think they're called Borknagar. If you brought, if you had Mayhem Fest, in what if you brought shit like, if you had a Mayhem Fest and Rammstein was there, Rammstein, oh, and Stay. Rammstein and Dimu, yeah, Guar, Gu- oh, give me some Guar, throw some Guar in there, Fuck. like <laughs> that makes Guar, perfect sense. Guar to and Hatebreed headlining the two second stages. It's over. The the second stages? Yes. No, the two stages in the parking lot. They both yeah. headline those two stages. Yeah. On one is Haybreed, the headliner, and one is Guar, and then you got like direct support with Parkway Drive and Thy Art is Murder. <sighs> Man, I see like if you're gonna do that, I'd put Parkway on the main stage. No. Parkway. I want a, them in the parking I know, lot, motherfucker. I, I know. I'm a I know. selfish fan. I, <laughs> I do I'm too. A selfish fan. <laughs> but, but I'm saying like with with their setup and with the way that they've been going, dude, Parkway's like I know they're huge. Top tier. I kinda for like wanna see what that with full pyro and shit. Yeah, like man. I've seen those videos. They're yeah. insane. They are top tier main stage. I even heard a rumor that they might have been recording on the road this whole time. Yeah. I could believe Did you that. hear that? I, I don't know. I haven't heard that. I heard that real, real, real second hand. Huh. So I don't even know if I believe it because I haven't looked into it yet. Yeah. But if that's true and they dropped a new album, next, if they just slipped a new album in next year. <gasps> yeah. You shit. I mean, anything's possible. I <sighs> Honestly, like I I would even like to see a band like Architects on main stage, Mayhem Fest. Ah. Uh, main? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't Honestly, know. Yeah. Main think about at DTE. Yeah. If they were on main stage, they'd be think about okay. Think about it when we went and saw when Cannibal Corpse was playing opening for Slayer. Mm. Think about that crowd watching the architects. I think that works? It would it would have to be a real di- well, yeah. Cuz that's what it would be. I guess like that that's more like my side, like my selfish side. <laughs> like I, I really want to see my main stage. I'm not saying it wouldn't. Uh, I'm just saying I think they would be happier with the crowd response as a band. Yeah. Uh, if they were on the second stage. You know what I'm saying? Because because especially early in the day like that on a mayhem festival, yeah. no one's walking around at the second stage. Or yeah. the main stage. I mean, they're all in the parking lot. Well, what about oh, man, there's there's just so many. Dude, I know. That's my like, point. Let's say, let's That's say. That's my fucking point. <laughs> like, you could really put together something really fucking special right now. I'm going to, I'm going to put on it. The, on the year. Oh. I'm going to put it in the universe and say, what if they got D. Snyder on main stage? Oh, my. Or side stage, even. That'd be a sick side stage band act. You see that? Like, do you imagine in that? In a world. No, yeah, dude. In like, a world where. You're so fucking right, Aaron. You just hit <laughs> something that you don't even understand because in a world 
Because right before you said that, the thought that shot through my head was in a world where Slayer is no more. Is the year mayhem comes back. And then you just pointed, and then you saying that made me remember in the time that mayhem has been gone, there is no more Slayer. There is no more Motorhead. There is no more. Oh, fuck, I just had another one. I don't know. I guess. Sabbath. But my point is no, there's still, well, Sabbath, but Ozzy. Oz, <gasps> oh, shit. Ozzy's got a new album. Coming out in January. Yeah. Oh my God! If Ozzy headlined Mayhem, no, it would have to be Ozzy. Be he Oz wouldn't fast. do that. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense. You think? I would want it. I uh, yeah. But it wouldn't. He wouldn't. I don't think it would happen. I mean, if if ever there was a year where I, I could see think, it happening, I don't even think he wouldn't do it. I just know like his music is all Sony. I don't think Sony would fucking. You know what I mean? I don't know. But well, and and you know, no more tours. Part two, part three. Like <laughs> keep it fucking going for as long. And yeah. I don't give a fuck. Ozzy can retire as many times as he wants, and I will <laughs> still be going to see him. All right. Yeah. Ozzy is the prince of fucking darkness. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if if that were to happen, it would have to be Ozfest. I wouldn't yeah. see it any other way. Well, if you were headlining Mayhem, I'd yeah. I would put it this way: I'd never miss an Aussie show in Michigan. I would. That's what all I'll say. Yeah. But that's yeah. Well, and that's like that's I think that's a little far fetched. Just yeah. as far fetched as like Iron Maiden doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Man. You gotta imagine though, like there's so many of these lists, and, and like Dude. even even when they were like throwing the idea around, like you know that they were looking at this year and like past years. Thinking like, all right, well, there's no more Warp Tour. Summer would, Slaughter is kind of going like, I, strong, I, I, but I, th- dude, there's, there's, I don't know, I don't know what the fuck is going on exactly, but there is, I don't know if you've noticed, I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but I would argue, I would say, at least in the last 15 years of my time going to concerts, there's just a different energy nowadays. Yeah, like. There's it's a it's like a revitalization. Like there's a new crowd, there's new blood, there's fucking like the crowds are bigger, more packed than ever. On a Wednesday fucking night in Detroit, you got a sold out Harpo show, a sold out St. Andrew show, and a sold out show up in Flint. All metal. All metal. Mm. Three shows in Michigan in one night, two of them in the same fucking city. All sold out. Like on a Wednesday. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the it's like shit is ready to pop. You know what I mean? Yeah. We just, we need that festival. Like every single person that we saw at Slipknot and at Slayer this year, because we went to both those shows together, mm. would be at Mayhem next year. Easily. I don't yeah. think it matters who's headlining. Yeah. I think they'd all go, no matter what. And quite frankly, I think I would go mm. pretty much no matter what. Well, there's there's so much like just solid just solid to, like new music that's coming out the because because quite frankly since mayhem has ended the only fucking festival we've had is Michigan Metal Fest mm-hmm. that's the only one and I've gone every year so f- to give me another one during the summer yeah I'm gonna fucking jump on that shit yeah you know what I mean and oh my god dude may at one point mayhem fest was that festival yeah like it was that the one of the year yeah yeah. And since it's, le- I mean, like even think about even like within the span of this year, you know, how many different bands and how many like not not so much like new releases, but like bands that have come out that that haven't done anything in a while are are coming out, you know, and mm-hmm, like I mm-hmm. honestly like I could I could even see a band like Priest on main stage, <gasps> you know, like that would be sick as fuck. That's the one because they put out an album last year. That's the one you could and, get. Yeah. And that would be like the equalizer, sort of. I was, I kind of noticed that. Priest in, and D. Yeah. That's where I was going with that. Because yeah. without them, D is the perfect one. But he doesn't want to tour anymore. Mm. Well, see, but I'm not. Priest does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Easily. You could get them, no problem. If you had I Priest like. on main stage. Oh, my God. Yeah. That would be insane. The pain <laughs> Oh, my God. 
my god. But I just, you know, like I, I feel like I feel like they've kind of been paying attention. They're kind of opening their eyes and seeing, like, man, like we need a festival like this. You know, we do, we do. There isn't one. It's a, really. It's a, like, I mean, come on. Like, yeah, you're right. Not only is there not one, it's obvious that the market is there with everything that's so big and selling out lately. Mm. Like, it, it, everything has been selling out. Yeah. Like every fucking show. In the in the space, metal of, is huge right now. Yeah, and I don't think anyone realizes it yet, yeah. but we do because we're in the scene. Mm. We see the crowds. We're at the shows. We're boots on the ground. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> straight up, uh-huh. like fucking two shows a month minimum. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, <laughs> wow, yeah, pretty much. Like that's fucking, yeah. Like we're, we're moving, and it's it's we see what's going on mm. in the scene at least here in Michigan, and we know it's ready to fucking pop. <laughs> if there's a fucking festival, any festival, Mayhem Fest or, or, or Michigan Metal Fest last this year was chaos it was insane like fucking yeah like that hate breed show we went to sold out and we were vip in that bitch that children of odom show we went to sold out we were vip in that one mm. insane year we had dude insane year <laughs> we had this year yeah. holy shit like think about that i'm thinking back to it yeah. oh, and that's how the year started yeah. dude we ended up seeing fucking Dahlia, mm. fucking Slayer, Slipknot, Lamb of God, Behemoth, Cannibal twice. Corpse twice. Behemoth twice. Behemoth twice. Yeah. At the gates. At the fucking gates, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Fit for an autopsy. Mm. Twice. Oh, my God. Yeah. We've seen some show Like, so... <laughs> For a festival to not exist, look, we just listed all that and we didn't go to a festival this year. Yeah. That, that almost doesn't really even strange. make sense. Yeah. yeah. That's my point. Uh, like, it just makes so much sense for one to be here right now because there's so many giants, so many heavy hitters right now. Well, I think, I think, because. Die like, is murder, yeah. Carnifex. Well, to me, the like, the mentality going into this year was like, all right, well, there is a Mayhem Fest, so let me fill the entire summer with shows that could potentially be that. That If they were you all I mean? on one, yeah. it would be, like... And the two the two biggest tours, the two biggest shows I can recall is Slayer and Slipknot. Yeah. And you've said they it multiple times that, summer. like, it could have been a Mayhem Fest. If they were put together, yeah. it's almost an entire... It, Mayhem Fest, maybe add four bands tops. Yeah. And it's a whole Mayhem Fest lineup. Yeah. We've almost seen it <clears throat> verbatim before. Mm. Like Well, and one of the things that they were talking about as far as like the the split from from actually doing Mayhem Fest was like the turnouts and stuff. And to me, like it, it makes sense in the terms of like two thousand seven lineups, sure. I mean, but like think about because I mean right now. I feel like there's a lot of bands that are saying certain things. There's a lot of there's a lot of albums that have come out this year in in response to things that have happened, and I and whether it be like a political climate, or whether it be just like a you know just in general, I feel like there's a lot of bands that are saying something, and I feel like that's you know yeah. there's 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 that that group of people you know I myself included that feel like you know we need somebody to to actually speak up and say something, and I feel like metal and heavy music has is more important now than it ever has been and i mean i feel like people are kind of starting to see that and are saying like you know like this is still relevant this is still something that you know people need and that we you know metal is in and it's it takes a unique angle at everything especially fit for an autopsy is a good example of that but it's it's a you think about it from the perspective of a festival like that. Like, it, 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 look, every genre has its ebb and flow. Even I, like, at one point in time, di- like, only went to like a couple concerts a year in between like 2012 ish and 2000, like, yeah, like 16 ish. So, yeah, the last year of, so during the years of the waning mayhem fest were the years where I kind of like slowed up going to shows a little bit and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I did too. Every genre has its ebb and flow where it comes, it goes up and it goes down a little bit. And that's really hard for a festival to maintain, especially during the downward years, the bottom years and the upcoming years until it peaks again. But guess what? Right now it's peaking. Mm. It's peaking in a, in a, in a big, 
big, big way. Well, I've, I've you could see- bring back Ozfest right now, and people would be fucking rabid. <laughs> yeah, rabid. Yeah. Well, and it's- Ozfest tattoos, like <laughs> yeah, Ozfest twenty twenty tattoos would be everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's definitely. I, I feel like the climate's changed a little bit because right about the time when when Mayhem Fest was sort of ending and when you know Warp Tour was on its last leg and stuff. Like, I feel like there was there was a little bit of a, um, a a feeling of like just kind of getting tired, you know what I'm saying? But then you know things started to shift a little bit, and you know bands started having something to say again, as far as like this year, especially this year, but um, more so within the last like couple of years. I feel like it's and I well I guess within the last couple of years since Mayhem Fest has kind of finished. And I mean, there's because there is still something to be said about like summer slaughter. There's still, you know, devastation on the nation is kind of a newer thing. That's I think it's in its third year. Well, didn't Carnival of Chaos happen this year? I think so. Yeah. 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 So there's like there is little ones here and there that are still kind of peaking. But as far as like, you know, I, I feel like we're we're in the space now where it's more important now than ever for bands to be able to speak up and say something that's actually meaningful. It's about, you know, kind of what's going on and stuff. And I feel like a lot of people are are searching for that and are looking for that. And, you know, maybe that's the reason why it's more there's more of a resurgence of it. Now, maybe not as as big of a deal as like if, you know, because, I mean, you know, you, you saw it back in like the early 2000s when it was like, you know, when Deathcore was still kind of a thing, but it was still like a smaller like underground thing. Like metal is definitely bigger now than it has ever been, but I feel like there's more like as far as like within the last like year or so, there's a big resurgence of things that you know bands that are saying something that's actually meaningful and there's you know there's music for that, and I feel like it's you know if if there wasn't that and if there wasn't this this climate of you know stuff that's been coming out of albums that have been really, really solid, especially this year. Like we've had, I mean, we've been kind of spoiled in terms of the year and as in terms of like releases that we've had. Um, I just uh, feel like I would agree. There's a lot more people that are paying attention to being like, wow, you know, maybe there's, there's something to be said about this and maybe, you know, we could work into this. So I, I, I would agree. I would. Yeah. Like the albums that have come out between this year and last Mm. last year and that are apparently coming out next year yeah well and you know like you you think about think back at the ones that have come out this year that have surprised you that have been like dark you know there's a lot of darkness there's a lot of you know anger there's a lot of things that are happening that people want to speak up about you know i mean i think you know when when i think of bands like that i think of you know dyer's murder i think you know human target was big and they're you know they talk about a lot of you know, socio political things that are going around, and I think of you know Dyer's murder, and I think of, or uh, fit for an autopsy and Slipknot that have you know put out stuff that's really touching on things that a lot of people need right now. And I think one that is that I haven't even gotten a chance to sit down with yet, but appears to be making waves in that same sort of context is this new cattle decapitation. Yeah, Death Atlas. Yeah, I've I've been seeing a lot about that too. A lot. Mm. And they're like even even when uh, cause a few years ago when Anthropocene Extinction came out like that was I mean they've always been a band that people have followed but this one specifically and I don't know if you heard uh, the the title track off of it that they put out I think it's like a ten minute song yeah it's all like the visuals one, and stuff yeah. dude it's amazing yeah it is so good and like the just all the video and stuff and the lyricism and what he's talking about and everything like it's it's very much you know touching on things that are happening right now. You know, and I I just, I think that there's a space for that and people are starting to kind of open their eyes and realizing that, you know, metal and heavy music is about way more than just like heavy riffs and just like screaming for the sake of it. Like it's, you know, it's making a point, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people are kind of, kind of gravitating towards that and realizing like, man, it's more than just that. Like it's more than just heavy stuff. And, you know, I think that's important. I mean, it is like, there's still stuff that's coming out that's like, you know, ridiculous and over the top as far as lyrics but, and stuff but but, 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 but but this is this is crazy to me because if this podcast existed in 2006 this is exactly what i would be saying about ashes of the wake 
<laughs> in a way, yeah. Because you could definitely time, trace it back to that at that easily. point in time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. For and then and then even things like with Megadeth coming out with things like the system has failed. <gasps> mm. Like United Abominations, those two albums are killer. Yeah, like especially for that point in time and understanding the political climate in the United States at that time. Yeah. American world, idiot. Like, even. American, oh, you know, God. we were talking about it Green Day the other day, but like, you know, I guess the, it's the same thing. Yes. You know, it is. It's like that. That was a band that saw in 2000. What was that? 2004. Four. I don't know. I, or regardless, but that was a band Somewhere that in there. at the time they saw what was going on and they thought, fuck that. You know, yeah. we're going to write this album and it's going to be, you know, and it turned out to be gigantic and now everybody knows it and stuff. And now I feel like we're seeing that, but it's a little different. You know, it's a little more aggressive. It's a little more like, yes. you know, and it's, it's because, you know, everything that's happening is a little more aggressive. It's a little more, you know, like, I mean, you turn on the news and, you know, violence is everywhere right now. And there are bands that are definitely doing that. And, you know, I feel like right now there, it's it's a time for for that to be necessary. You know, because as as far as it, you know, talking about things that tear people apart and stuff like it, it really, you know, brings us all together in terms of that, you know, that need to to express like, you know, views and things that are happening. Because, I mean, there's a lot of I mean, every day there's something new coming out, but also oh, yeah. every day there's something new in the way of of heavy music and the way of, you know, the way mm-hmm. people are choosing to express themselves. So, mm-hmm. And that's why I think maybe more so now than probably ever that I've gotten more into like hardcore music and Isn't more into like interesting. You know. Isn't it interesting in this time <laughs> of apparent extreme turmoil? You and I are sitting here talking about a potential golden age of heavy music. And, yeah. While at the same time, arguably, there is also a golden age of film mm-hmm. and a golden age of television style art yeah and all all these different gold the people are describing so many th- the arts as having golden ages right now yeah well and <laughs> i in a lot of different facets yeah i was just gonna say in terms of you know i mean it's it's hard to ignore the the similarities between what was happening I mean, you know, like we're—I guess in a weird sort of way—we're we're rolling up on on what would be like the Roaring Twenties, in a way. Like you were just talking about the other day. You like know what's crazy is I've always thought about that. Yeah. Oh. The thing that we were talking about the other night. Oh like, my God. There's there's a oh big, my God. There's a big shift that's happening. Aaron, in the world. you just hit something. Yeah. You just hit something. Look up. Where's you your know? phone? I need you to look up for me when alcohol prohibition ended. Alcohol prohibition in the United States. Just look that up. I'm curious because uh, you just pretty, hit something. But that's pretty, crazy. Pretty like but strong. The, but you just hit on actually two crazy things yeah. because that's something I've all like I've thought about since like the ninety. Since I remember thinking about this since I was in elementary school, in that like, oh, I'll like ever since I learned about the existence of the 1920s and the Roaring Twenties, I was like, oh, I'll be alive in the next Roaring Twenties. Like yeah. I, that's always something that's been in my head for some reason. I don't know why, mm-hmm. but like, yeah, like the it's weird that you just brought that up because it's literally something that's been in my head ever since I learned about it as a child. Yeah. Its existence and that was its reference name. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've always thought like, are our twenties gonna be like this fucking L- awesome? Like it was that was the <laughs> great time. You know yeah. what I mean? This awesome technologically advanced like great time right before the great depression and we just had our great depression in 2008 so the year i graduated from high school was the greatest economic collapse in the united states history was the year i graduated from fucking high school (laughs) so yeah fucking the idea of maybe potentially a new roaring 20s has always been something maybe a little romantic to me in some way or Mm. another but when did alcohol probation so it says um 1920 to 1933 was that period. So it Dece- ended in December, 33. F- December 5th, 1933 was what time it's got. And that's so, okay. For the ending of you it. Know, so maybe things don't line up exactly, but we were, and this is something I kind of wanted to talk about 
you know, I was even thinking about doing a solo episode about this, but maybe we could talk about it, is the fact that two days ago I turned 30. Mm. And my I, my friend, uh, friend of the podcast, Jordan, pointed out to us was my birthday this year marked the last day of marijuana prohibition in the state of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Because the very next day, December 1st at 10 a.m., recreational marijuana went on sale in the state of Michigan. People were out in waves for it. Yes. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. There were giant lines. Yeah. Giant lines. Uh, yeah. That tripped me out. when he. I didn't think about that until he pointed it out. I didn't either. It freaked me out. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I'm going to remember this forever yeah. now. Like, now. Like, that's insane. It, was and it's, a, it ended up being a great night, but what? It's, and it's probably because you can remember a time, and you specifically, probably more than anybody, can remember a time where you had to pretty much fight for... I did. I got... You know? Yeah, I got uh, in trouble for yeah. smoking weed at one point with the law. Once, one the one blemish on my record. <laughs> but uh, yeah. now it's legal, and that shit should... <laughs> doesn't matter anymore so yeah fuck it like it's I just, but yeah I, I definitely was at one point in time straight up persecuted by the law and police officers and a judge and everything for doing what is not legal 100 mm. percent. and now like that's just kind of the norm yeah like it's you know like and, and it's it's weird to like because from from your perspective like you've seen all of that because to me, and I don't know, it's kind of a weird like left turn we took, I guess, but right. <laughs> kind of like led We're into rolling. it. Yeah. Um. But like to me, I could, you know, I could remember times where I've been, I've been like in a situation where I've had to kind of deal with that, but it's never been like, like a dire thing. Like it's always just been like accessible to me. Like I could, I could never remember a time where like I had to like go somewhere like sketchy. Mm-hmm. you know or like i had to like put myself oh, really? in any like positions where yeah oh, it was wow. just it was just always like readily available because that was like what was happening at, yeah. at the time you know i bought it in flint michigan so yeah. <laughs> exactly I've been to some sketchy places so like you can you can definitely recall times <laughs> and remember places where like you know you had to you know work things out and you know oh yeah so and like it but i oh. Oh, yeah. I have a different perspective of that because it was so fun. Yeah. It's looking back, then I'm thankful that nothing bad ever happened. But yeah. And maybe like I'm just real lucky. Yeah. But and you know what? In retrospect, sort of bad things happen, but nothing like horrifying or terrifying. You know yeah. what I mean? Like got ripped off a few times, but that's about it. You know what I mean? Well, there's, I mean, I'm not going to lie and say that there weren't times where it didn't get sketchy. Like, because there definitely were, but it was more so. It was more so like what I was doing than than the circumstance, but same kind of thing. Like you know, what we're talking about in terms of you know, like you've you you understand like how it was from yeah. the come up. Yeah. You know. And yeah, I mean, I remember a time before there was even. I mean, I, I, there was a big change at one point in time in 2008 when it went medical, mm-hmm. and before medical marijuana existed in the state of Michigan. You know, on the black market, at least there was like a, there was like you could get the shitty shit, which was called mids or regs, <laughs> yep. or the middle shit, which generally was just called mids. Yeah. And then, or the good shit, which was called like hydro or chronic or whatever, you know mm. what I mean? And uh, they all had very different prices. Mm. And, but then when medical came around, everything turned into the good shit yeah there was no the the red the two lower ones went away and the good shit became the same price as the lower ones the The market dropped yeah exactly exactly and that's you know so yeah yeah like i remember really big changes in in the whole environment i remember when the cannabis cup first started coming here you know Mm. all that kind of stuff i remember i remember going into a head shop before I was 18, actually, my uncle took me into one in downtown East Lansing. And I was actually very thankful that he did because looking back, because it was a, uh, it was a, it, it was a shop that if, you know what? That is an interview that, that would be a great interview for the podcast 
is to talk to those shop owners because they had a really prominent shop in in East Lansing, and uh, they fucking they be cool to talk to because they were like there was like an in house artist that made a lot of the stuff, and uh, it was called Oz. Mm. So people in East Lansing, like people from back in the day in East Lansing, may remember a place called Oz. Uh, and I remember going in there at a very young age and then continuing to go in the, going in there until it left. Uh, and actually, while I was working in, in, in the head shop that I ended up working in, uh, the owner of that place came in and actually sold us. I actually own a piece that was made by that glass blower uh, because she came in once and I bought one off her um, and I bought some other pieces that we ended up selling in that shop. But... <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I, it's, I never intended or thought that it it, it wasn't until much, much later after I started smoking and everything like that, that I realized that this was a whole, what up? Oh yeah, go for it. This was a whole fucking, uh, like subculture on its own. No. That I was actually a part of and didn't even like fully understand or realize it. Hmm. And I actually had like at least in my area, my personal little area here in Lansing, Michigan, had history in. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really realize that. That didn't come to fruition to me until I mean, honestly, the last couple of years, to be totally honest. Like I started like talking to people and realize oh shit, yeah, no, I know that place and you know what I mean? Like all this stuff, hmm. like it's fucking, it's weird. And now it's legal. Yeah. Completely. So to the point where anyone can go into these stores and get it. Mm. Anyone. In the, over the age of 21. It's just crazy that, like, in the span of a decade, like, so much has changed. And I think, yeah. like, because I, <clears throat> you know, I mean, you look back at, you know, even, like, the early 2000s. And you think like you know a lot changed and stuff, and it did. It was it was kind of like a newer you know because that was when like you know technology was kind of on its come up and stuff, and mm-hmm. there was a lot of different things happening. Music was pretty different. Oh yeah, I bought shit on a flip phone, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> As did I. <laughs> but even even so, like you know, past that, like I really think that from from 2010 to now was like the biggest leap from not just like metal from like you know like technological standpoint from a you know from everything else like that it's it's crazy to see like the similarities from you know like the 1920s and from like you know 1910s and stuff like it's now that you bring that up the contrast is so weird sometimes that you kind of like look at it and you're like man like that's now that you too far off of actually that's that's trippy, actually. Cause did you see the fucking? Did you see the shit about this new, uh, the new Razer phone coming out? I didn't. You haven't seen this? No, I haven't. <gasps> <laughs> but I have, I have seen like there, there is like a, like a, like a smartphone that is like a flip phone, but it's the Razer. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna show this to you. And it's gonna blow your mind. My point with it, showing it to you. Is uh, that it between you make a good point because consider the fact that you know, here coming up here in a couple months, what it'll be it'll be two years of this podcast, so it'll be about <laughs> that's crazy, it'll be about two years since people like us can afford to make this happen and all of this, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like we have no, we have no audience, no nothing, just a couple of guys, and yeah, people did it way before us, on much lesser equipment, and p- props them. We've done it on lesser equipment. I've done it on a phone, um, but the, 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 we're just we're just a couple of guys from nowhere in Michigan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody. So. The fact that the wave hit us two years ago, 
to the point where so you've been in bands for how long playing drums for how you know what i'm saying mm. and you know you know what i mean the time it takes you know what i'm saying and all this you're right like it is lining up to be some big jumps here in the next 10 years yeah real big and in, in ways that a lot of us can't even really comprehend not like, yet yeah like i did put it this way i didn't see fucking this shit come I mean, I will say kind of, I mean, to not get too far into it, but I will say that like, you know, I, I look at the way that, you know, the, the news is going and the way that like the political climate is, you know, and I think like, you know, how is that going to affect us in the next decade? You know, cause that is really, that's really what we're looking at, you know, is what is, what is happening now? Like at the, at the end of the last decade is going to significantly change how we see things, but mm -hmm. it's just a matter of what, and it's a matter of how it's going to change things, mm -hmm. you know? And it's hard to, it's hard to not look at it like that and kind of be like, you know, pessimistic about it. All right. So full disclosure, everyone, we just had some technical difficulties and came dangerously close <laughs> to losing the last half hour of that show, but we saved it. It's there. You just heard it. So, but we're back now. We fixed it. We got it all together. Um, remember, this is DIY till you die. So we oh, yeah. are doing this on, you know, everything is, everything is just praying. Everything works every time. So <laughs> yeah. that's the situation. But we're back now. Uh, and I honestly think we know right where we left off. And I honestly think you just drove that point home uh, with talking about, like, you know, we were going, how we're going into the next potential maybe hopefully this will be looked back to, like it, 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 you know in the 2080s hopefully the 2020s will be looked back upon as the next roaring 20s you know what i mean that'd be yeah that'd be an awesome time to be alive you know what i mean like especially if we already went through the great economic collapse and it doesn't happen again in the 30s and you know we don't have any more world wars that would be great too <laughs> Yeah, I don't but, know about that right now, but well, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah. <laughs> so that would all be great, but, yeah. you know, we'll see. Yeah. I was just, you know, it's it, it's weird looking at the similarities of it. It is. And seeing, like, how, old, you know, it's it's different, but it's still, like, there's there's things that happen that you could see, like, the overlapping. So. Yeah. Yeah, there are like uh, parallels you can draw. Yeah, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, man, you never know what you're in until you're in it. That's so, very true. I mean, we said it it's like that. All the time. It's like that. It's like that gut wrenching line from one of the most gut wrenching lines in the entire series of The Office is "I wish there was a way." Said by Andy Bernard, played by Ed Helms. Nope. Is I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days. When you were in them. Yep. <laughs> That's so real. Oh. Yeah. It's so gut-wrenching because I, I genuinely feel like that's something most humans can, can, can like, uh, relate to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone has their high school days. You know, everyone has their college days. You mm. know what I mean? Like, everyone <laughs> has their something days. Yeah. That... It's like, man, I wish I had known I was in those days when I was in them. Because if I had known, I would have lived them so much harder. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, or just differently. Di or, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Got wrenching. <laughs> but, yeah. in any case, uh, we may have uh, the return of Mayhem Fest in 2020. Fingers I mean, crossed for a touring fucking metal festival for the love of god yeah the i mean that's satan that's something, <laughs> that's something to look forward to i would say big time there's big a time. lot of i'm sure i'm sure everybody that saw that was trying to put together like their their dream mayhem fest lineup i mean i think that's exactly what we did tonight yeah yeah i mean <laughs> like <laughs> we put together quite a festival yeah and even Iron like, Maiden, Judas Priest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things that like probably won't happen, but it's really like you know, more of like. Can a, you imagine if that was the main stage? Oh, Iron dude. Maiden, Judas Priest, Slipknot, fucking uh, uh, Lamb of God. Yeah, 
That's the main <laughs> stage. And the second stages are like a Monomarth, Hatebreed, Cannibal Corpse, Devil Drop. Yeah. Oh, just even the openers are headliners. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that is that is that is mayhem. That is a mayhem festival. Yeah. That's not a normal festival. That is a mayhem festival. And that's what they should be going for. <laughs> Cause up to now they've always been like a festival. Yeah. But they should be the mayhem festival where every band is a headliner. I mean that's like for for a little while that's kind of what it was. And kind of seemed be like that again. Yeah. It well, I would argue that it was that, but at that point in time it could be argued that most of those bands ended up becoming Headliners. They Kinda. weren't headliners at the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the same time, then, at this, you know, because then you don't have, yeah, well, maybe I'm full of shit because then if that's the case, then you don't have bands that will become headliners the next five years on that bill. But at the same time, if it's your comeback, <clears throat> if it's your comeback. You kind of want, like, the heaviest. That. You know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I would I would kind of like to see him do like a like a full, uh, either like a local or like you know kind of deal for for one like a stage, third side stage. Yeah. Like they did used to do that. That's like true. A very yeah. small side stage where they had local acts wherever they were. And yeah. That's, I think that's a really smart thing to do. Or there was the the I think it was like the headbang for the highway or yeah. something like that. It yeah. Was some name to it. Something like that. Yeah. Like the the winner got to open Mayhem Fest or, you know, Summer Slaughter, or whichever. So, I always thought that was kind of cool. But as far as like a full a full stage for it and everything, I don't think they've ever done that, which would be cool, you know, to kind of like give a nod to the the up and comers. Mm -hmm. So, cuz I, I know agree. I know I I'd, I'd lose my mind if we ended up Opening Mayhem Fest. Oh my one god! <laughs> oh, I would. Insane. I would literally. I would beg to Rody. <laughs> oh, would, that would be. That's all you. I would, would do that. I would work <laughs> merch boot. No, actually, fuck that. I would want a Rody. Yeah. I don't want to work merch. <laughs> <laughs> it's way more because fun. Because then we get backstage. Yeah. And see the other bands. And like, that's give like them all the dark stickers. No, I couldn't do that. They're yeah. Bad. Man, like that's that's one of the things I always think about is like you know, when when you open something like that, like I imagine you probably meet a whole ton of people. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. <sighs> yeah. The fancy. <laughs> but who knows? Yeah, you who know, knows, man? You know, who knows? I just like if if they bring it back, I just hope that they add some extra stuff to it to kind of make it a little more, you know, just yeah. like that that extra, yeah. you know. Make it a little more of a big deal instead of just like, oh, like, you know. Because you're primed. The next to, year. It, you're literally in a time right now where you're primed to be the biggest deal on the block. Yeah. So oh, go, dude. go for it. Yeah. Go for it. You know what I mean? There's never been a better time to go for it. So. I just hope they don't like play it safe, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Just fucking. Which is kind of like. Be it's, actual mayhem. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird, like, kind of, like, spoiled way to look at it, <laughs> in a sense. No, but... I mean, <laughs> live up to your own name. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know. Mayhem Fest should be fucking mayhem. So, yeah. And, man, like, there's there's so many memories from it. Huh. Like, that's one of those those festivals that, like... Oh, and yeah. And I know, I know that, like, the early OzFest, you know, people that went Similar. to that... You know, very similar. Yeah, like you got, you know, your fond memories from it, and that's always kind of what you hang on to. And man, this was our generation's Ozfest. No exception. Up. Yeah, straight up. And you and I just saw Ozzy, which is crazy. It was great to me, even still. I want to see him again. Yeah, hopefully, gets a chance to. Yeah. You uh, you texted me about checking out that uh that show that he's got i know we talked about it before well i don't think it's on anymore yeah i don't think they do new episodes anymore but yeah jack and ozzy's world tour yeah yeah ozzy and Jack's world i couldn't tour remember whatever. what the name of it was dude i just started watching it <laughs> it's fucking incredible yeah it's fucking incredible because you think you think like a show with him or with the, at least like those two like that family you think like the osbournes or whatever but it's it's kind of the opposite of that 
It's a little I more. I like this even more than the Osborns. Yeah. It's a little more honest. centered. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's just them fucking around on the road, and it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> If you're a metalhead and you never, if you, if you no, if you love Ozzy and you've never seen Jack and Ozzy's World Tour, you need to check that shit out because it's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> like it was, it was one of those that like I just kind of, I just kind of came across it. I didn't know that it was a thing. It's just Ozzy being full tilt Ozzy. Yeah, yeah. Like full <laughs> tilt Ozzy. Yeah, and he's amazing, <laughs> and all you want is more of it. Yeah, I love it so much. <laughs> it's so good. There was uh the the space station one. I think you yeah. watched. Yeah. yeah, I watched that. That's in the, I've only got the first season, so oh, okay. Uh, I've watched like the first like five episodes, maybe something like that. You see the one where they go to the uh, the body farm? Not yet. No, that's a weird one. Body farm? No, I saw like where they went to a weird <coughs> like museum. Yeah, it's well, it's it's and this I saw, place. Like, the Roswell one. Yeah. A couple others, but yeah, no, I don't know. I've seen anything that said a body farm. Yet. I don't, I don't know if that's exactly what it's called, but I remember, um, it was like this place where they like preserve like dead bodies to kind of like see like the decaying process and stuff. I don't know, it's really weird. No, that, it's really like there was like a weird museum that had dead bodies in it, but it wasn't like sh- that, yeah, it was, it was like a museum of oddities, yeah. What well, I, I think it's maybe that's different, yeah, it's that's a little, different, a little different than that. Yeah. It's it's kind of more like like actual. I think there's like two or three that they have out in a field, or you know, like this this weird like contained area where like they they look at like the whole process of it and stuff, and they actually go to it, and they're kind of like freaked out by it. It's really what weird. The fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't seen that yet. No, uh, lots to look forward to. Yeah. Um, oh, it's, yeah, it's a it's a good show. Check it out. Definitely. I got the Ozzy bat right there. <laughs> Ozzy is always with us. Oh, yeah. Ozzy and Dio. They are the gods. They would both be on the Mount Rushmore of metal. Let's be oh, real. dude. Yeah. Let's be real. Ozzy and Dio have to be up there. <laughs> it puts a fucking darkness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when uh, they were trying to get him to get in like, the big like spinning thing, <laughs> the orbital thing. <laughs> yeah, I just love every time he's like, "I'm I'm a heavy metal god." Yeah, <laughs> try to use that as like an excuse to to not do anything. <laughs> yeah, or get out of something. Oh, put some fucking darkness. Yeah. <laughs> he just just. Yeah, no, though. If I had the ability to drop that whenever I wanted to, I fucking <laughs> would. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. If Gotta you earned earn it that. like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If you earned it like that, then it's over. <laughs> you are that. Oh, my God. I love Ozzy so much. <laughs> it's crazy how good he is live stuff. Really. Oh, yeah. One of the last remaining next to, uh, like, Halford. D O or, or D, uh, D D Snyder D yeah. Snyder. Hey yeah, man, I was looking at D O, thinking of D Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the, the flag. Fucking uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Not many of the like true originals left. What is the deal with this Motley Crue reunion tour? Because I just saw all of Motley Crue together a couple years ago. Yeah. How. I feel like, like it's it's more because of the, the documentary. The movie, yeah, yeah I yeah. can see that. I was gonna say like I just saw you guys. Is <laughs> it? You never you got to break up to have a reunion, don't you? Yeah. Like they didn't. I saw the original lineup. Like yeah. what is going on? The, it's uh, crazy to me. I feel like the the Pantera thing that just happened is pretty cool. What the, Pantera the, thing? The, the show at the at Harpo's. But I, f- oh, I feel Phil like Anselmo? yeah, that was also a big like tour that they're doing. I think. Well, was he, was he doing Pantera songs? Yeah, that yeah, was a whole like tour kind of devoted to that. Really? Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, it was kind of why I was I was bummed that the, all three of those shows happened on the same day because <laughs> that would have been. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen Battle Cross. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. They opened them. Yeah. Would have loved to have seen them. Yeah. Love Battlecross. If you don't know Battlecross, look them the <coughs> fuck up. Especially, Posh. yeah. <laughs> Destroy. 
are. Say, like, some of those, yeah, we were jamming to them the other night. Yeah, we were. Fuck, yeah, we were. <laughs> that was, All the like, there was, there was a couple of songs from them I didn't, like, I kind of forgot about, in a sense. So good, dude. Yeah. So good. Cannot wait till they release, if they ever release more music, I'll be very happy. I didn't realize that the last album they put out was 2015. Yeah, like, it's that's, been a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been quite a while. I really hope they, uh, another band that could be a mayhem. They come out with a new album. Yeah. Just come out with a new album. Battlecross. The Battlecross and Dahlia stage. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. On. That's what we need. Like, when does it, when does it, like, did you ever think of a time when we'll figure out, like, when the next, like, because, I mean, you gotta, you gotta imagine, like, Metallica is, they gotta be on, like, you know, the way of kind of like Slayer. Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're gonna play however many shows until. They can't basically, and then after that, like you know, there's there's Priest and Maiden, but like, who was the who is the one that like sticks out? That's like the you know, like is there really the Godfather? Yeah, has left. Yeah, you know, because then you know Ozzy, I guess, <laughs> kind of I mean, stands yeah, of out to me. Ozzy, yeah, but, but he's he kind of lumps into that, you know. Else, yeah, crew, poison, maybe right yeah. at that point, yeah. Cause they're still going. Yeah. Def Lep. That's true. We're at the point where the hair metal is the Godfather. <laughs> are we? Is that is where that we are? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, like. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I guess, I, I guess you could put Anthrax in there. Oh, absolutely. Because they're still, you know. This, they were supposed to come out with a new fucking album this year. Yeah. And they never did. And the last one was pretty sick. Yeah, I really want to hear the new one because they said it's even heavier than the last. Yeah. But it's still not up. No singles, no nothing. No word, nothing. Yeah. I really want to hear it. Joey Benetton. It's going to be on. <laughs> and what's the drummer's name? Charlie? Charlie Belladonna. I think. Charlie Belladonna. Yeah. I could have like totally butchered that. But <laughs> But yeah, man. Like, awesome. I mean, like, you know, we talk about it all the time. But like, I don't know. I, I always think of... Because you always have, I feel like it's weird. You always have a different perspective of it when you're like younger, when yeah. you're listening to stuff. Yeah. Like, cause I, I always thought that, like, you know, Lamb of God and, uh, like Kill Switch, I guess, were the two, like, big four, I guess. Like, there was like a big four metalcore kind of happening. Yeah. And yeah. At, at that time, like, that was, you know, that was when the whole, like, new American, like, new wave of new American, wave of American heavy metal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember when that was a big thing. That was Lamb of God was yeah. leading the way. For On Earth. Lamb of God and Kill Switch actually yeah. were the ones that lead. In, yeah. On Earth, Shadows Fall. And now we just yep. kind of look at yep. some of those as like metalcore. Yep. I don't even think Shadows Fall is a thing anymore. Nope. Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. I might have saw them on their last tour. Uh, is that uh, The Loft? Damn. I think, yeah. It's kind of cool. That's crazy. I've never, I've never been like diehard into them. Like, you Neither know how you I, are some But bands. they've always put on a great show. Yeah. You know, and there's like there's some songs that they have where it's just like super solid hitters. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But yeah, like there's not really. I mean, like you know, it's hard to look at it because it's all kind of objective. Like you never really, you know, as far as like the bands that are around now that are gigantic, like you never thought when when you first got into them that they would be that. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Kind of fucking crazy, man. <laughs> but yeah, no. It's all perspective. It is. Which is weird. It is. Perspective is a weird thing. Turning 30 was a weird thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Turning 30 was, yeah. like, honestly, like, all of the other birthdays are just another day. Mm. It never really felt like anything different. But hitting 30 actually felt, I felt it. Yeah. It felt different. For some reason, this past, when I was, or, uh, 25 was weird. 25 could be weird. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. So like, halfway to 50. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm halfway to 60. Yeah. You know, and it's weird for me because it's like, I, you know, I had, I mean, no other way to put it. I had really nothing but really great shit to look up to as a kid. Yeah. Like every, all my aunts, like you know, 99.9% of my aunts and uncles parents grandparents everything like all fucking like 
met when they were pretty young, got married, had kids, settled down, went to college, you know, uh, the standard, you know what I mean? The regular, yeah. So, like, that's what I always, that's what it was. That's what I thought happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I remember getting getting to ages, like, 21, and, like, ooh, not even close to that. And I feel like they were all a lot closer to that. And then 25, like, I just graduated college. They all graduated college, like, four years ago. Now I'm 30. They all were married and had kids, and I'm nowhere near that. So it's, like, really awesome on one hand to have had all those really positive influences and everything like that. But then when you don't live up to that, in a sense, or is it living up, or is it that the world has just changed and now things are just different? Yeah. You the, you can't really follow the same paths that they did because those paths no longer exist <laughs> in reality. That's yeah. the reality of the situation that we're in right now. So despite it's the fact that I do have my college degree and all these things, like, you know what I mean? Like, I ultimately do have a similar path, but, like, yeah. the paths that they did no longer exist for people like me or mm. most of the, anyone, anyone else. They no longer exist at all. So it's like I try... Uh, Sometimes it feels weird when I try to like compare myself to them, but then when I take that into account, it's like, all right. But at the same time, you hitting thirty, and not being anywhere near where you spent your entire life thinking you'd be by the time you're thirty. I get that. It's a fucking weird feeling, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's a real yeah. Because when you're twenty, even up to the point where you're twenty nine, you can be like. Yeah, I'm still 21. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still basically a kid. I'm 29. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're 30, mm. three decades. I feel like there's, yeah, there's always kind of a weird stigma decades. around that. Yeah. Three decades. At least you've made it this far. Mm. And there's a point in time in history where making it to 30 was, was an actual accomplishment. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, dude. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. When you, and, and that time was not that long ago. It was in the 1900s where people were getting polio and all that shit. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, there's that. Mm. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I guess if there's one positive there's thing that, to take from polio. It. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, you know, there's there's a lot of things that like you could have potentially avoided. You Not know, polio or syphilis. Yeah. I always I always think of that though. It's weird, like or the plague. It's it's when you know because I I I kind of had that. <laughs> I I kind of had that like the last birthday, you know, kind of realizing like everybody around me was was getting married and was you know having kids or like either of the two. You that know, one, of, I mean, you, you know, know, the getting married, the having kids thing. Yeah, we got Facebook, so that hits our generation harder than most of the pre any yeah. of the previous, but. I kind of got over that quick because personally, for me, this is my, but it was like, you know, that's it's that's something that hits when it hits. Yeah, it it's, shouldn't hit when it doesn't, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's so it's really when you realize like you're you're headed somewhere else. When you're fucking when you, I mean, what it comes down to is meeting someone, meeting someone. That's yeah. where the what it comes down to. Like that's a, and for the people, some people they meet them then you know what i mean it's like phases yeah it seems like and you never know which phase you're on mm. until you're on it so yeah. that's that's a weird kind of thing that i've been fighting with recently yeah like try not to think too much into like like oh you know you still got like this time or you still got you know like oh or maybe you're you're like in a different part of your life than somebody else or you know maybe like oh it's just not like the right time for for this or that you know, if that makes sense. Get, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you know, people... I've always... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I've always heard, like, comparison is the thief of joy. Yes. And I always think that is of, very. Oh, my you know, God. That is the yeah. Bible. That is the fucking <laughs> preach. When, like, you, when you really start, you know, kind of looking at others, kind of like... And I sometimes I look at people that are younger than me, kind of like that. Like, you know, like they're, they're so much further ahead, but like that wasn't like where I was at at that time wasn't necessarily where they're at. You Comparison know? is always th- because yeah. uh, 
because here's here's the thing about comparison. Here, so everybody, you can easily, you should be able to easily discern why comparison. Because okay, for me as a podcaster, I could compare myself to Joe fucking Rogan, where I have eighty seven followers on YouTube or something like that, which I appreciate every single one of you, and I love you to death. You oh, are the yeah. realest motherfuckers on earth. <laughs> but he has. 20 million downloads an episode and that's just on iTunes that doesn't even include YouTube you know what I'm saying mm. I could compare myself to that and be like oh I'm nothing but that's here's that's why the comparison is the thief of joy but what that ultimately is is an incomplete thought that is an incomplete thought because where that thought should continue is yeah but I'm different I have different life experiences. I have a different story to tell. I have a different thing I want to talk about. I, you know, there's exponential differences. So ultimately, it's yeah. You could c compare. You're not comparing entirely, though. You're not comparing the complete picture. You're just comparing like numbers. Mm -hmm. It's this abstract thing. You're not comparing the genuine perspective you don't know you don't know you don't know you could be the next fucking great poet the great songwriter the great whatever because of your perspective but you don't know because maybe you're spending all your time oh there's no way i'll ever be good as this or that fuck that <laughs> no. fuck that fuck ever being as good as anything else you should want to be as good as you no. that's what you should want to be as good as Fuck everything else. Fuck comparing, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, it's just, you should want to be as good as you. Yeah. Not somebody else. Well, and you, you know, you kind of rob yourself of what your potential of, you know, or is. When but, but, but there's nothing wrong with aspiring. That's true. Yeah. You have to be influenced. Yeah. You know? There's no this podcast without Kevin Smith and Joe. There's no me wanting to start a band without Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath and Jesus Priest, you know, Megadeth. Mm. Like, there's no me screaming to the top of my lungs in my car without those bands either and <laughs> wanting to be a great singer or whatever, even though I'm not even in a band. But, like, all these things, like, there is none of that without those influences. So you, of course, aspire. Mm. But don't compare. Yeah. What? Create your own, like they did, like um, the ones that inspire you. Uh, you should be inspired by them to create your own, not create a copy of theirs. Yeah. Boom. S sometimes, sometimes it's hard when you're when you're drawing. <laughs> Drop the mic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's that's all true. You know, like, you know, I mean, I like. I feel like when you when you compare yourself to to somebody else or like to something that you aspire to be like sometimes I feel like it's it's a little bit of um like you you're selling yourself short in a sense mm -hmm. um and sometimes that can be a little bit dangerous because then you kind of talk yourself out of doing a lot of things which is where I find myself a lot of times but you know like you got to you got to find you know stop it yeah and Stop talking yourself out of anything. Yeah. Just do it all. Yeah. Do it all. Stop. Like, you never know. Like, anything, any video you want to make, any stream you want to do, just fucking do it. Stop kidding yourself out. Stop psyching yourself out. Stop fucking. Just set up the equipment. God damn it. If all the equipment works, like mine is failing right now, I don't even fucking care. My equipment is failing right now, and I'm still pushing through right now just because it doesn't fucking matter. Like, what matters is what you do ultimately at the end of the day. And if you don't fucking start it, it's never going to get finished. It's never going to get done. So who's ever going to hear your voice if you don't start talking or singing or writing or streaming or fuck whatever, whatever it is you want to do, hmm. whatever, acting, <laughs> write, writing poetry, fucking, I don't fucking care. Like, whatever it is you want to do, like, like no I one's going to start doing it until you do, uh, you know? 
Well, I, I still think it's crazy that, like, you know, at, at one point in time, you know, when I was in the first band I was in, that I did I ever think that, like, now I would be in the position where I am. Where, exactly. like, you know, we've we've put out however many albums and we've, you mm-hmm. know, we, we wrote a song with, like, the person that I consider to be one of, if not the top, like, vocalist of, you know, the metal generation. scene. Yeah, really. A generation, motherfucker. Yeah. The lead singer of Black <laughs> Dahlia. You played on a song with the lead singer of Black Dahlia. Yeah. I'm like, if... You did that. If I... Yeah. You did that. <laughs> Dude, yeah. what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you know. So, I don't even know what to do with that information. Yeah. It still blows my mind to this day. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes you just gotta... And like that's there. That's one of the things that, there. that I try to remind myself of is like, you gotta, you know, stay humble and you gotta figure out like, you know, like there's... it's it Sometimes it's it's hard to you know stop and recognize your accomplishments as they're happening like you know it's not often that a mirror is held up to you and that's yeah that's kind of not often you reflect are able to genuinely reflect especially through anybody else's eyes yeah of what you're doing well you know you know and everything moves so fast now yeah like it's it's from one thing to the next you know like today today's like the new the new thing came out, but tomorrow it's like, you know, something else is big and gigantic and stuff. And, you know, so you kind of just go with the times, but you don't realize like your own, your own potential and your own strengths and kind of what's all is happening. And what you're doing. Yeah. If yeah. you start doing it, sometimes you're like months and months into doing something and then you realize someone else is listening. Yeah. And you're like, oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. What? I didn't. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh wow. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it's. There. Well, there's there's been times even like you know with with doing this where it's surprised me. Yeah. You know, like people yeah. have shared our stuff and have mm-hmm. have said like they've listened or have liked our posts and have commented on things that. Or like the reviews, you know. Yeah, man. Like, like those, it's 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 crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Like you never know, and. You just gotta start. You know what I mean? That's that's the biggest hurdle you you and I can both attest <laughs> to the biggest hurdle is doing those first episodes. Yeah. And then you start doing it and it just starts and then a year later all of a sudden you're like, Holy shit, we've been doing this a year and then another year in you're like, Holy shit, we're we're kinda getting we're kinda getting good at this. Yeah. Like, what is this? <laughs> like, you yeah. know what I mean? And it just keeps going and it keeps going. As long as you don't stop, as long as you start, you get that over that biggest first hurdle and you start and you don't stop. Then it keeps going. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh man, self doubt is is one of the hardest things. Yeah, ever. to get over. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It's just. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Here's what it is. You gotta have that. Everyone has to have a fuck it button. <laughs> Everyone, yep. whether That's, uh, for some people it's within, for some people it's weed, for some people it's alcohol, for some people it's whatever. For some people, you know, you just have to have a that. Fuck it button. That thing that makes you go, you know, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, let's go. Yeah. Fuck it, let's go. Like, you just gotta have that fuck it button to make it go. And once you press that button and you go, it's all over. You just yeah. gotta keep pressing it. You gotta keep pressing it and it moves. Things move. It's weird. Well, there's, I feel like there's, especially within the last year, there's a lot of times where I've had that same thought. I feel like there's a lot of power in that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do and just saying, you know what? Fuck it. What happens? What happens? What's, what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could fucking happen? Yeah. Nothing. (laughs) Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. That's what it is, dude. Get the fuck it button. I've said this for years to people. You got to have a fuck it button. You got to just have a button you hit where you're like, fuck it, and you yeah. just do it. Like, And I'm even a victim of not doing it. You know what I mean? So mm. countless times, countless times. Like so many situations and opportunities where I've pussied out. But how many, how many times have you thought of something that like you really wanted to push through with and like you just didn't? And like you exactly. just had that feeling. You had an idea. Yeah. <laughs> with the idea, you never know what it's gonna evolve into. Yeah. I didn't know. I, yeah, yeah. Like if we end up doing this fucking searching for this 
first band, heavy metal band in Michigan, heavy metal history thing that we've been talking about. Like, yeah. dude, like that is somewhere I never thought this would go. We need to have Mike back on here. We need to have you and Mike on here to talk to me about this, to get this idea <laughs> really rolling. Yeah. Because I've we've already got ten. I've put the tentacles out. I put the claws out. All right, the claws are out. They're scratching. Yeah. They're searching for shit. <laughs> People have come back to me already with ideas and angles and things to do. I need to have you and Mike on here soon because he's the one that Kate brought the idea to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I need to have both of you back on here. We all need to sit down and talk about this because that's it somewhere I never saw this going, but it's something I want to do very badly mm. because that's that as a fan is something I would seek out. It's and you know what's what's crazy about that, and I didn't really think about it till now, but like there's there's certain things that you do and there's certain things that come up where you realize like you're at a point where you start asking yourself, like, well where where do I fit into this? Yes. Like where do I you know, and, and maybe maybe for us it's telling that story of that. Maybe maybe for, for me it's also it's telling that story, but it's also like where it goes from like bar Grace perspective yes there really isn't a band out there yes. that kind of sounds like we do nope and you could say the same for e-corruptor you know yes. and every other band that's kind of around the area forces that's big. green leaves yeah man like where where, Mortalis. where do we all fit into this weird like mold that we're all a part of that's like pushing things forward into the next thing you know yes snap foop yeah Oh hell yeah! Shit life. Yeah, and I feel like acid witch. <laughs> I feel like, you know, if if you don't ask that question every once in a while, then you know what's you're kind of missing the point of what's happening. You know. Yes. So I don't know. Absolutely. Like maybe maybe we're a part of that bigger look, story. You know. I agree. And you look at some like my. I mean, honestly, one of my biggest influences of all time is Sam Dunn. Yeah. The creator of the metal head. Metal Headbanger's Journey is, in my opinion, the greatest documentary ever made. It is my f one of my favorite all-time things to just go back and watch on a regular basis. And I love the Banger TV channel on YouTube. I watch every video they post. And they're just, you know, it's they started a thing. They started a whole thing. And that's not necessarily, you know... I don't know if I want to make a documentary or movie or anything like that, but like they're a big influence, put it that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Oh yeah. Oh man. And I feel like in a sense we're kind of trying to figure that out right now, you know, yeah. like trying to figure out like how how do we cuz like to me that that documentary and like what they were doing was a big um it just it made a big impact and it also it made me think about it differently, you know. It made me think about oh the way God. that, like, you know, it's it's music history. Yes, it's not just like what I enjoy. It's music yes. history. It's bigger than what we thought. Yeah, that that to I would argue that to the people that saw that movie in our generation at the ages that we saw that movie. To the people that saw that movie at the age we saw that movie in the in, in those formative years, it made us realize it, it 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 was it was like a it was like a monument to what this what we are a part of. Mm. It made because bef think about before that there was nothing like that before that yeah at all. So before that, you were all you had was the shows, but that movie made it worldwide. It made it bigger than just the shows you go to. It made it, it made it so every show that I go to, I now f like can see all the other shows going on in the world, and you know, watch the live videos from Rock and Rio and download and fucking all from all over the world. Be like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like that movie really bridged all, in my opinion, to me, to me, what that movie did was bridged heavy metal throughout the world. It made me go, oh my god, this isn't just me. 
this isn't just a hundred or so people I see shows with in Detroit and in Flint and Grand Rapids in Michigan right here. This is world fucking wide. Like I'm a part of something gigantic. Mm. Like on a level I never understood before seeing this film. Yeah. So well, it's I feel like it was kind of the first time that when I saw it that it made sense. Like it was, it actually it put everything together, and it was yes. like, like well, the like the early stuff that you used to listen to when you were younger, and you didn't realize what you were hearing on the radio was also a part of a bigger picture that was happening right now. And now, like you know, this is kind of where it's at, and like the state of it and stuff, and kind of realizing like throughout, you know, throughout all the time when it was like in its infancy and stuff. And then up to now, like, you know, it's just the, the significance of it and realizing that like it was, it was more than just, you know, entertainment. It was more than just like music. Like it was, yes. it was something that people were doing that was saying something about what was happening. It's a know? movement. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. it's always been. And it's a gigantic subculture. Yeah that most people aren't even aware of yeah you know and like you know there there is a lot of back and forth about you know like it, it promotes violence and stuff but i feel like i feel like those are kind of older you know that's and that those are for that what's for the uninitiated <laughs> well and oh yeah <laughs> What's yeah pretty much well what's what's weird to me is i i feel like there's less of that Happen, now in a sense yeah, yeah I like agree. i don't I, agree. I don't feel like i i'm as much of a uh like if 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 i'm wearing something that is that is like suggestive i guess or like that is you know like if, if i got like cannibal shirt on like say nobody cares like yeah it's it's not and i feel like maybe that's like a change of the times i feel like that's more like a climate and it is, thing and it is every once in a while you'll see some bullshit in the news but it'll be yeah. Gone in a day. Yeah, and it was. You know what I mean? Because it, everybody knows it's bullshit. Yeah, everybody knows now. It was the we same. We already went through Marilyn Manson and Columbine. We all know it's bullshit. Yeah, we all went through it. We know it's music is not causing people to go to fucking places and shoot people up. Mm. We all know this. We all know music is. In fact, there are at this point there are more fucking peer-reviewed scientific studies that show heavy music is a v extraordinarily nothing but positive outlet for individuals than not. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There I are full-on peer-reviewed scientific studies on this that have come out in the past five years. We've talked about them on this podcast mm -hmm. before when they've come out in the past two years alone. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, anybody, and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a clickbait news story. Mm. That's all it is now. Well, and it's it's the same thing. I mean, we had it happen this year with uh, the Acacia strain. Yep, that's what I. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep, yep, yep. I don't remember which that's one what it I was, was referring to. But there was a shooting, yeah. and someone was wearing an Acacia strain hoodie yeah. or something like that, and yeah, mm. and it was a flash in the pan. It was gone in three days. Yeah. Because and, everybody knows it's bullshit. Well, and they they the band even came out and yes, said something they about had, it. You know? They issued a statement. Yep. And, and it really it it speaks to to the generation because I feel like if that would have happened back in like the nineties or like the two thousands, like early two thousands, Marilyn yeah. Manson, when it did, yeah, like do you and like I've okay, well I guess I guess it's more of an opinion question because like I've I've heard people say that if if Manson were really like you know like the the person that was like you know. To try to like spread his his message about what he was doing and stuff and like his style and everything, do you feel like, you know, objectively he should have taken credit for that and said like, yeah, you know, this is or or like, do you feel like it's in the best interest of saying, you know, because obviously you know the the people the people that are that wrote the songs that were inspired by maybe the person that did it. We don't know. Well, hold know? on though. Yeah. Let's start here. The com if we're talking about specifically the Combine Kids, all we know is they were fans of Marilyn Manson. Yeah, that is all we know. We don't know what songs they liked and didn't like. That's true. Yeah. That is all we know. Have you ever seen Bowling for Columbine? I don't think so. <gasps> I feel like I should though. <laughs> Here's, and this is an example. Okay, how old are you? Twenty-five. 
twenty five. So I but, guess I guess but, we do have we do have a little bit. Okay, so what, okay, no, better question. That was a stupid question. Better question. What year did you graduate high school? Uh, twenty twelve. Oh. Yeah. So, so you were a freshman when I was a senior. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah. That has a very interesting impact. That's interesting to me because I was shown bowling for Columbine. I saw it before high school, but I was shown it in high school. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bowling for Columbine has one of the greatest interviews ever with Marilyn Manson specifically talking about all of this. Like he addressed everything you just said directly. And it's it's one of the greatest interviews. Like the reason why I asked you that is because I was like, wait, he said, oh, this is Bullet for Combat. If he does see Bullet for Combat, that's... Oh, my God. I, well, now... We need now, to hang out and watch that fucking movie, dude. Now that I'm looking at it, I, I realize what it is, and I know I've seen portions of you it. You may have seen portions of yeah. it. Yeah, sure. But you need to... F- you and I yeah. need to sit down and watch that movie because it is unbelievably important. It's unbelievably important. It's one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think, especially the, for that Marilyn Manson. Segment. Yeah, because he was seeing, uh, he was saying that the the most, uh, and it's it's a pretty famous quote from him. He was saying that like the the most shocking coverage of what was happening was from the media. Yes. When yes, you know they were they were bitching about his his videos and stuff, saying that they were violent. But the most violent thing that he ever seen was from. The news coverage. And yes. Stuff. So I, I have exactly. seen that. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That was a big part of it. So yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it, it's the same, you know what I mean? It's the same, it's singing the same song. Yeah. It's the, it's the, it's the clickbait. Mm. It's the clickbait before it was clickbait. Yeah. That's what Marilyn Manson experienced. Um, and that's, and the click straight up clickbait is what Acacia Strain just experienced earlier this year, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. It. I mean, there is there. It's one hundred. It's abundant in all scientific research. It's abundantly clear that violent video games and heavy metal music have absolutely no attributing factor to real life violence. Mm. Plain and simple. Dude, I remember. I remember being like seven or eight years old, saying that same thing. Yes, for years now. That's my point. That's my point. For years, it's been known for years, and it's the people. It's uninitiated yeah. that do not want to believe. Like it's a fucking ah oh, yes. Got <laughs> them his eyes. Yeah. It's the those fucking people that want to fucking, you know what I mean? They want to still hold on to the that old shit. I mean, think about fucking like if you've ever seen if okay. First of all, if you if you're a metalhead and you've never seen the film Detroit Rock City, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Even in that movie, what was it? The yeah, the drummer of the band whose mom was like the crazy Christian lady. And she's like, you want to listen to the devil's music and now you want to worship the devil in the flesh. <laughs> when he wants to go see Kiss, yeah. you know what I mean? It's always been. And it's never changed. Yeah. And it's, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just this thing. It, but at the same time, us as metalheads, we can't deny it. We kind of love it. Yeah. <laughs> like, there. Look, let's be real. If someone, if there was a group, a parent group that was picketing a Bograith show, you wouldn't love that? I mean... Yeah, <laughs> I you can't deny it. Well, let's that would not be the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Like we as metalheads love it because we know they're full of shit. Mm. Because we're just put. It's just a show, and we're just. It's just the way. It's look. Art is a reflection. Here's the way I look at things. Not you know, this isn't like set in stone or anything like that, but. I've always seen art as a reflection of society and I've always seen heavy metal and like horror films and things like that as a reflection of the darker portion of society. Mm. And some people just gravitate towards that. It makes them feel good just as much as the Hallmark fucking movies make the people that watch those feel good. We like the darker things. Mm. We it's just it they feel more real to us. They feel more gr- gritty and grimy and like 
like the like the things we experience on a more daily basis. Like uh, to me, Clerks is one of the most metal movies of all time because it's just so gritty. You know what I mean? It's so raw. Yeah. Like you know, it's it's that sort of mentality and element. You know that the the, the raw, gritty, unprocessed genuineness. You know what I mean? Like those are the things that really. Like when you really boil it down, those are the things that attract the metalhead. You know what I'm saying? In mm. my opinion, at least me. So, and I think that can be ascribed to many others. You know, I don't think that's unique to me. Um, well, how many how many times have you have you seen something that, like to 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 anybody else would have been like shocking, but to you it was like, oh, that's pretty. Oh, that's a cannibal cover. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just kind of thought nothing of it. Like, yes. You know. But those people, they have their thing yeah. that makes them feel just as good as and empowered as we do when we listen to Light to Rust. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. whatever it is that we like. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. everyone has their thing. Mm. And we, this is our thing. And it, all like it's uh, i'm thankful like here sitting here because you know what all the other like i said before all the other ages like 18 to now pretty much have felt the same 30 has felt different and to be sitting here at 30 even though i'm not necessarily where i thought i would be at 30 or anything like that it feels good to at least have some sort of identity in heavy metal. In that, th I at the end of the day, if nothing else, like this, this moves me. Like I know this thing makes me feel. Yeah. It makes me. Want, it inspires me. It what makes me want to keep going and. Gives me perspective, different perspective. Sometimes perspectives I don't even want, but because I'm not a fucking vegan, but I'm about to sit down and listen to cannibal, uh, uh, kettle decapitation, top to bottom, and read every single lyric along with every single song, and I'm gonna listen to every song twice, literally. Mm. That is my plan for that album, and I'm not a vegan, I'm not a vegetarian, and none of that. So. It's gonna be these are these are gonna be perspectives that I don't even necessarily adhere to. No. But they're things I'm open to. And this is gonna be a big bridge into that, at least in the heavy metal world. Of course I listen to Joe Rowan, he has a lot of scientists on there that talk about these sort of things and all this and that. I'm not not exposed to that world, is my point. But this is gonna be a very different thing. Went going from Cannibal Corpse mm. to kind of decapitation. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So, well, how many how many times have you listened to something that has kind of challenged you? That kind of exactly. made you that kind of made you realize, like, or exactly. at, at least like you you could walk away with something like something different, or like as you A were listening to it, yeah, or even like things that things that they wrote about that as you were listening to it, you were like. I don't know about that. Like, I don't know if I, you know, but at the same time, like you yes. still, you still go on with it and you still appreciate yes. the fact that they were able to, to voice this, you know, and that's their opinion. It kind of made you think about something a little bit. They you were know? able to crack your skull a little bit. Yeah. They were able to get through. Yeah. And give you a little something new. Yeah. That is, that is the greatest thing that art can do. Yeah. That well, is what art is. <laughs> I've, uh, I've looked at, different things like um you know just like different popular things that are going on right now and trying to see like that kind of perspective in it seeing like like maybe there was something that like you know or, or, or seeing like if i could if i could pick something out of it that kind of challenged me a little bit you know? yes like that's there's something that i look for in that and it, it really a lot of times like it makes me either appreciate it more or it kind of changes the reason that i i enjoy it or i listen to it there's you know. nothing better than that. Yeah. Oh, that dude. That is yeah. what art is, in my opinion. Yeah. That is what it's supposed to do. So it's supposed to do. That is what is what it is designed to do. Like that. <sighs> yeah, dude. 
That's a whole conversation. That's what in I'm yourself, saying. Really. That's what I'm saying. Like that is what. That is, and that's what heavy metal does for us. Mm. That is what it does for us. Yeah. Everything that we're talking about right now. So, I don't know. I don't know how we got here. <laughs> Lost I don't know. In the dark. Why not? It's great. One yeah. step away from you. So lost in the dark. All right. Ozzy, we worshiped your feet. <laughs> You're not worthy. But I oh guess, uh, I don't know. We got we got some pretty some pretty good episodes coming out, man. I'm pretty excited about December it. December is about to be lit. Yeah. We got, uh, coming up, we got uh, Clint, the lead vocalist of Ray Corruptor, is coming on the show to give us his 100, you heard me correct, 100 yeah. <laughs> albums of the year. It's going to be a fantastic episode. Maybe we'll split it up into two parts. I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to sit down and record it all and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be fucking incredible. And then... Uh, and then we're going to have, uh, hopefully, Alex, maybe even Alex and Seth from Recorruptor back on with Aaron. Mm-hmm. So we can talk about some of those things. And Aaron and I, we have, you and I have our Filthy 15 album of the year list and oh, our yeah. Filthy 15 album of the motherfucking decade list, motherfucker. <laughs> we got both of those coming up. Everything in December, and I genuinely, uh, d- 100% within the next week, m- maybe out this week, maybe out next week, definitely in the next two weeks, I'm going to have out my Cannabis Corpse album review. That's going to be out. If you want to do a Fit for an Autopsy review, that'll be out. We could do a Cattle to Cap review. We could do a Mayhem review. We could do a Rotting Christ review. <laughs> uh, we got a handful of reviews, low-hanging fruit, we yeah. could easily do. So uh, any of them you want to do, but definitely the Cannabis Corpse and uh, at least a Cattle to Cap for sure. Yeah. And uh, See, I'd, I'd like to do a Fit for an Autopsy. That would be great. I would love that so much. Just because we, I mean, I feel like at this point we both have a pretty different perspective on that Mm -hmm, album, mm -hmm. which is really interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So I want to kind of see like what your what your thoughts on it are and stuff. So it would be kind of cool to do that one. Well, then you know what, you and I will start talking about that. Maybe we'll get that. uh, Well, you know what, maybe this will be a busy week for us, and we'll get that (laughs) together. Oh yeah. So uh, all right. So yeah, let's uh, let's wrap this one up. This is good. I feel like that's a good length. Um, Thank you, everyone, for bearing with us. We had a couple of technical difficulties tonight. Remember, this is DIY till we die. So it's, uh, you know, we get hit with some technical difficulties sometimes. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. And uh, be sure to follow um, Lost in the Dark podcast on uh, iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, rate, whatever. Whatever you feel like doing. If you like this show, comment. Just reach out to us. Yeah, I will I will find see it eventually and I will respond, okay? We we see everything we that see happens. Everything. Any uh you know, Instagram, YouTube comments. Mm-hmm. You know, whether mm-hmm. whether they're you know good or bad, whatever criticism is always welcome. Yeah, well. every, every, every one. Yeah. So we must be doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's gonna give us a flood of bad ones. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck it. Um, we love you all. Be sure to follow fucking Bograith. Hell yeah, man. Fucking Twitch, Bandcamp, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. The whole lot. Uh, and definitely. quite frankly, us on iTunes, like they they're on here all the time too. <laughs> so yeah, like yeah. everything. We uh we're looking at you know early, I'd say early tentative date next year, looking at an EP. <laughs> so so watch out for that. Um, a lot of stuff in the works right now. Um, but yeah, definitely like there there it's a big year next year. I feel like we're gonna yes. be. Because we uh, um, definitely talked about and posted about putting out more music and stuff, and I saw that. I saw so that. So hopefully we can we can deliver on that, and we can get some more out there for you guys. Because I'm honestly, and it's one of the last things I want to add, I guess, to this one, is that I'm really, really because I I don't know, I get I get pretty reflective this time of year with everything else. I think most people and, do. Yeah, and I do too. So you know, you start looking back at stuff and looking ahead towards things and. I definitely feel like this this next 
album or this next EP and you know the songs we've been working on and just the direction we've been heading is really exciting for us. So I'm I'm looking forward to everybody else here and what we got going. So get ready, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so, A yeah. new dawn is coming. <laughs> oh yes. Phase two, man. Phase two. You will you will figure out what more what In that the means Bob a little Wraith later. Universe. Yeah. <laughs> get fucking so, yeah. ready. If if you still listen every day and if you you know, if you're into what we're doing and stuff, you know, obviously thank you. Reach out. Yeah, man. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. You know? Seriously. Our eighty seven subscribers, I want to hear from every single <laughs> one of you. All of you. Seriously. <laughs> um and uh and yeah, that's be it. Also, quite frankly, be sure to follow Recorruptor on all yes. the above uh Bandcamp, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Carnus Mortalis, fucking everyone else, Greenleaves, fucking everyone we've ever mentioned. Follow all of them because local music, the next big band starts in your town. Don't forget it. The next big band could be in your town right now playing local shows. Mm-hmm. You could be a part of the majesty. So check it out. Go to your local shows. Always support local music. And uh, especially if you're in Michigan, check out all the bands that we mentioned. And thank you undyingly and so fucking much for listening tonight. Um, Yeah. We love you all to death. Raise your horns. Bang your fucking heads. We love you all to death. Good night. Yeah.